Hey everyone and welcome to another video and today we have a special one. I haven't done this sort of thing before. Um, we're going to be talking about support secondary, um, secondary roles and um, specifically honing in on support. And today we've got Cupcake joined with me. Um, Cupcake, feel free to introduce yourself and give and let's let's go into your history a little bit and, and um, how we met and, and where you are now and what, you, what you've been doing recently. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, thanks for having me, Curtis. It's, no problem, it's, man. it's been a, a little while since our last video, but it's, it's good to be back. So pretty much I am um, a support main. I've been playing professional league or been involved in the scene since 2017, so quite a long time. And in 2018, we were on the team together. You were the coach. I was a support. <clears throat> um, and we had a pretty good year. So... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah we went to MSI and moment. Worlds, right? That was a, we went to MSI and Worlds that year. Yep. Um, that was a very that was a good year actually. That's probably one of that was probably one of Diewall's I think most dominant rosters. We had a really great year that year. And so yeah, now yeah. you um you transitioned from um you took a little bit of a break. I think you said you went you went back to uni, right? And then, mm -hmm. but now you're back playing professionally. And yeah, um you took it. You, you did a little bit of coaching as well in between there, didn't you? Exactly, yeah. I wanted to stay active in the esports scene while I was studying my degree. So it, it was, I think there wasn't really enough time to do full time um, professional support and uh, double major. So I decided to just get involved in coaching. Um, okay. I had some assistant head coach and head coach spots and then some individual coaching on the side, which I really enjoy. Um, but yeah. And so, yeah, right at the moment, you are still pursuing a pro career, but you still do support coaching on the side. Exactly. It's a yeah. good way to kind of stay um, active or just like keep thinking about the game, keep improving. And like even in the off-season cool. and stuff. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So um, so why support, right? And, and look, a lot of people might be asking why why support secondary? And, you know, a lot of people in the Midland Academy and I get comments in the YouTube saying, Curtis... You know, I, I do fine when I get mid, but I find that I get secondary role all the time. And they say, look, when I put top secondary, I get top all the time. Um, jungle is a completely different game. And, you know, it causes a lot of issues. So, look, I am very big on two roles. As a mid laner, you should only ever be playing two roles in secondary, in my opinion. You should be playing either support or you should be playing either AD carry. Now, the main reason not top is because top is a very different game. I'm assuming Cupcake is you as well. I mean, you've come from support, and I think you played AD carry before then. What did you play before support? Have you always played I, support? Yeah, I did play quite a lot of AD carry. Um, yeah. Right. But, like, the game, from what I've noticed, and I used to come from a little bit of a top background as well, is that top is... The, the dynamic of the lane is very, very different, and the trading patterns and the style of the trades and the lane length... The game is very different, and if you don't play a lot of top lane, you will just get dominated by like a random Trinomir one trick, or Fiora one trick, Camille one trick, whatever. So I've just found that it's a very, and it's also a very, or not, not a very popular role. So if you put top secondary, you're going to get it a lot. Conversely, with jungle, jungle is just a different game, and I think that a lot of the, the skill set you learn from mid lane doesn't translate to jungle very well and it, it requires a metric ton of time it can yeah. work but it's very it's very time invest heavy um so yeah. i i think support and ad carry make the most sense so we had a discussion off camera before about um support and ad carry now you said something that was really good um about how there's two types of or the way we both perceive mid laners is kind of like the more cerebral type mid laner you would think that they're more like think holistically about the game maybe they play more, play more mages and things like that and then you've got like the more mechanically intensive what i would call body oriented player that tend to play you know the yasuo's the yone's and the akali's so we came to the conclusion together that support is for those players that are a lot more cerebral right and the 80 carry yep. players we be if you play yone yasuo you like playing those sorts of champions 80 carry is also completely fine but the premise being that both of these roles are less time consuming and the skill, I would say the skill set um, applies more from mid lane to flows on more to these roles. Would you agree right. with that, Andy? Yeah, it's also much less punishing. I'd say if you're trying to off roll top, um, first of all, you're not likely to verse many other off rolls top. <clears throat> and secondly, it's a very punishing role. If you make small mistakes, you can just get completely cut out of the game. As you said, jungle is just a completely different game. 
Um, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So I, I, I agree. Nice. All right. So getting into support. And I, I, a lot of people ask me, because how do I even get started? How do I know what champion to pick? It's just an absolute nightmare when you're first starting. So what we've done here is we've actually put together, and, and Cupcake's gone ahead and actually really, he's categorized the supports into separate categories. So we've got it into Hard Engage, um, Playmakers and Roamers, like the Thresh, the Pike, the Bard. We've got Enchanters, Sona, etc. And then we have Situational Counter Picks. Now, um, we've also got col the, the, the columns here. We have, you know, pros and uh, like the good things about or good with and good against. We've got um, the negatives or weak against with. And then we have like kind of like the mindset to describe how you should be thinking in terms of playing these sorts of champions. Now, what I would recommend coming from mid lane, again, you've got to try out all of them, see what feels right for you. Again, in league, you've got to really love the champ you play. But ideally, if you're coming from mid lane, you're playing secondary support, you pick like maybe two of these. And you all in on two of them. Like, that is it. Like, you don't you don't worry about getting counter pick and all that sort of thing. I know that eventually you'll start to struggle with that. But there are certain champs that you could probably just largely blind pick. So what we're going to do, we'll probably just go through. Um, and and um, Andy, if you want to kind of go through and maybe highlight, you want to start by going through some of the hard engage maybe champs or and kind of read through this section and then we can go to yeah, row by row. So, yeah, you don't want to pick too many champs off roll. And maybe it would help to pick champs that are in the same category so that it just makes your off rolling a little bit easier um yeah so the hard engaged champs obviously they they want to engage they're proactive they can set up ganks they have very effective roaming and they're, they're very threatening and fogs and river skirmishes but you really need to know how to execute them if you use their cooldowns poorly you're going to look like an idiot you're just going to die and the skirmish patterns are very unique. They're very cooldown reliant and they have not as much uptime as like enchanters or probably a lot of mid champions that you're playing. So that will take a little bit of a while to learn. Mm. Um, yeah. Would you would you actually say that from a mid laner, like from, from people that you've worked with in your coaching clients, would you say that people pick up enchanters more intuitively or would you say it's like a case by case basis based off like their personality? Um, I would say enchanters are better just because they're less punishing and you can focus more on the macro side of things. Mm. Um, but it, it's definitely more of a personality thing. I've had people come to me that already are like one or two tricks and they stick to their champions and then I just focus on the learning objectives. So it's really just up yeah. to the player. So out of interest, if someone were to... Um... <coughs> Let's just say someone just wanted to one trick a support, right? Let's say yep. they didn't have much time and they and they really just wanted one champion. What yep. category do you think would be the best to one trick in a way? I think it would it would actually be useful to equate their current mid pool to the support mm. pool. Mm. And if they're playing a lot of mages, a lot of cerebral mids, I would suggest the enchanters. <clears throat> if they're playing a lot of like mechanically intensive um, champs, I would recommend the Playmakers and Roamers. If they're playing more of the utility style, like, you know, Galio, something like that, I'd recommend the Hard Engage, just to make the um, the transition a little bit easier, so that, there, yeah, there's a lot of common ground between the champions. Okay. So, look, rather than going into all the details here, I think people can go over this in their own time. I think let's actually cover the mindset stuff. So, I think yeah. the mindset stuff is the, the stuff that's unique, and, and look, yep. To be completely frank, Andy, you um, you really inspired me when, when, when I was working with you in 2018. Um, your mindset or the approach you had to certain champions from like a, like the way you viewed the champ was very unique. I, I hadn't really worked with many support players. I think before that I worked with Destiny. Yep. Is, now, is, he, is he on EG or something? Immortals? Uh, Immortals, yeah. Immortals, right. Mm -hmm. And he... Um, I would say he was a lot more logical in, in his approach, but you were very like, okay, I'm going to adopt the mindset of the champ I'm playing yeah, yeah. and then that's going to influence my decision-making. So, I'm, you know, you were a big Pike and Bard player and uh, if on the mindset column we have, the Rift is your playpen. And um, I loved how you described um, your, like, your mindset heading into a game as Pike or Bard. It's like you're a wild boar and they're stuck in the arena with you. It's that sort of mindset. And So how do you think this sort of mindset, you know, you being a wild boar, they're stuck in the arena with you, the Rift is your playpen, how would that influence your decisions and behavior in game, you think? 
it circles back to a lot about confidence and just loading in and um, yeah, feeling confident that you're going to make the proactive moves and that they're always going to be second to you. And um, that helps, especially with playmakers and roamers where confidence is key and you need to be proactive and you need to hit the skill shots and you need to be all over the place. So yeah, just adopting the, the logical step-by-step -step kind of a approach doesn't, doesn't always mm. help. If, if any of you guys are watching Worlds and, you know, you watch Fnatic, you watch Hillisang, he's not taking a logical approach to all of his decisions, you know. He's a, he's a psycho, you need to be a Chad, <clears throat> and you need to test your limits and find out what you can and can't do. So, right, yeah, so that's that, a certain personality type, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you got to just go ham. I mean, because yep. if, you, if, you, if, you, if you sit back and relax and you're playing Pike... I mean, you, yeah, <laughs> you just, yeah. you're not, you're not getting, it. you're not getting anywhere. And then, so yeah. look, we have the mindset for like the hard engage. You need to be everywhere, engaging with no hesitation, not being afraid to limit test. Relatively self-explanatory. I mean, if you're not willing to see what you can and can't do on one of these champs, you're just going to miss your windows, and you're slowly going to get poked out by an enchanter. You know, you, mm -hmm. you're just not going to be useful. Yeah. Um, and then we have mindset for the enchanters. You got to know what a good and bad fight looks like. Um, Staying focused on keeping your AD carry alive. Um, stay safe. Don't face check. Very conservative. I think you're right, Andy, in saying that a lot of like traditional mage players or scale, that scaling mage mindset, even though that's, that's an outdated approach to the game, um, you know, it is an outdated approach to the game, but, you know, there are people that like to play like that. You've, yeah. always, you're, you've always been pretty critical on enchanters. You've never, you've, you've been, I guess, the opposite of an enchanter player most of your career. Why is that for you personally? Why, why... Am I, first of all, am I correct in saying that? And, and what would you, what are your comments on enchanters Honestly, in general? Honestly, so when I was playing solo queue before going pro, I was almost exclusively playing enchanters. And I'm quite disappointed in how the meta has been for the last like four or five years in um, being exclusively frontline and tank. And I really enjoy playing enchanters actually. It's just, I've often felt on teams, I need to be the one that makes the Chad decisions and the engages and get things rolling. So um, yeah, the meta and the team dynamics have kind of pushed me on to playing exclusively hard engage mm -hmm. and playmaking, but mm -hmm. I really do enjoy playing enchanters a lot as well. Okay, that makes sense. <clears throat> and so rounding it off here, we have situational counter picks. We have Braum, Morgana, Blitzcrank, very unique champions. Now um, we've got here, you exist to annoy the, ch the enemy. You save yeah. your important um, counterpick cooldowns and do what your champion was picked for. Don't spam abilities. These are very... These are not champs you could probably one-trick, right? You don't really, no. you don't really want to one-trick a yeah. Braum or a Morgana or a Blitzcrank. These would be hard for um, off-roll to play because these you right. need to see the comps and then you pick them accordingly. So it'll be hard for you to kind of work up your champion mastery on these picks. Right. So, um... You know, for those of you who are out there who want a good holistic view of the role, this is a great place to start. I would, I would probably recommend experimenting with a whole range of them, see what clicks for you, um, and then and, and then go from there. It should give you a little a good baseline, a good starting point. So, um, you know, when we first started talking about this video, I, I outlined how I have my specific kind of fundamentals of mid lane that I like to hone in on. For mid lane, you know, we have warding and leaning, and then like. Um, well, I mean, for me, it's like wave states and resets and things like that. But for you, you kind of have a few different ones for support and you kind of compartmentalize them into a trio of support fundamentals, waves, roaming and fog warring and wink on. So I'd like you to kind of step me through um, what these support fundamentals are and how and why they're important exactly. How do they function? Right. Um, yeah, we can start with waves. <clears throat> so... I almost see support as like a secondary jungler and that you're moving between lanes and you're ensuring that they have good wave states. And if they have bad wave states, you fix them because, um, yeah, the game is centered around waves. So playing around waves means ensuring that the wave is that your ADC or your mid laner is not going to be denied a lot of minions or that you are proactively using stacking waves to deny the enemy team minions. Right. And just being in fog and making decisions as to um, having good wave states between mid and bot is really, really effective. Because waves, in, in a way, they enable everything. Waves influence the type of trades you can take. Waves influence what the, the enemy can or can't do. Mm -hmm. 
it, 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 it waves dictate how long you can roam for and if you can really roam. Waves are like kind of the fundamental of everything, aren't they? Yep. It's like the, the baseline. And then we have um, roaming and fog warring. So what exactly is fog warring and, 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 and the importance of roaming? Right. This is just a fancy way of saying, like, being efficient with your time and cutting out the fat. And the way you can picture this is um, a lot of supports are just AFKing on BotWave. And they're just going to stand there. They're just going to donate the enemy team free information as to where they are the whole time. And sometimes, a, a lot of times, you don't actually need to be on the wave. You don't even need to be in their vision. You can be in river already and um maybe you already have a shoving wave and your presence doesn't influence if that wave can be shoved or not maybe you already have the shove so you go and move or maybe you already lost the shove so you go and move and that that pressure of moving um it makes both lanes uh, a little bit more hesitant to make decisions because they don't know where you are right so if you start to lean to mid then their mid laner has to play respectively if they don't maybe you can kill them if you go into fog then their bot lane has to play a little bit more um respectively if they're going to get collapsed on with your jungle it's just anything is better than doing nothing and afking right. in lane doing nothing is just not good so it's like maximizing options or it's like it's like well it, it, or uptime maximizing yeah, uptime, uptime. Yeah, yeah 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 i like There's, that and we're probably yeah. going to say that so we're going to we're going we're to go through a few examples of both um cupcakes laning and then mine he's gonna walk through his laning i'm gonna ask questions and then you're gonna go through some of mine and then i think there's something that i'm pretty bad at a lot of my rooms are inherently coin flips so we can really break down how to go about that i think that would be a great one and the last one we have wing cons simply put what are wing cons and why are they important for support so understand yeah so win cons just give you an idea of what each team wants to play for from the start of the game and obviously things change in game but just having a general overview can help you figure out how you kind of want to play your early laning phase or where you want to move early on and if they have a huge win con top like a fiora and maybe you have like a malphite or a weak site pick and you have a aggressive bot lane then you want to take aggressive trades you want to look to set up waves be proactive link up with your jungler um, and on the flip side if you're if you expect to be on an island and you want to scale then you want to you want to stay healthy you don't want to take risky decisions and you just want to allow yourself to be carried which sometimes you have to so just having a general overview of how you want to approach the game not only helps you make those decisions but puts you in a mindset of actively thinking about the game and not autopiloting which is very important so with you and your clients to, to wrap this up, most of the mistakes or errors or room for optimization largely comes down to one of these three things. They either have an issue with their waves or the way they perceive waves uh, or their decisiveness with waves. Um, either the next, even if they do create a good wave set, then you would look at, are they roaming? Are they exerting pressure on the map? Are they maximizing their uptime? And then is this, are they actually thinking about how to maximize this uptime or, or, or roams or waves that's in reference to the way the wing cons? Exactly, yeah. Right, I like it. Very, very nice. So um, so what we're going to do, we're going to kick it off by looking at three of your baby first 15 minutes of, I pulled this from your stream. So I think these were played in the last month or so. Yep. Um, a Bard game, a Lulu game, and a Rakan game. Try to get a mixture of different champions to kind of see and look i'm going to ask you a lot of questions um some probably some very obvious others not so much yep. um so yeah let's dive straight in so what i'm going to do i'm going to get these ones up here um it'll be interesting to kind of see after as well to compare your gameplay with mine that would be interesting to kind of see For the sure. key differences here so um let's kick it off here so this first one is the we'll start off with the bard game so I'll probably press pause on the comms here. Do you remember this one at all? Um, if I if I saw some of the nameplates, maybe. But okay. honestly, I played too much solo queue to remember all of them. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what do we got here? We've got a bard game. Okay, we have bard of So walk me through what's going through your mind. You see a game like this loading in. What are you starting to think about? Um, I'm already thinking about how I expect the bot lane to play out and that they have a range advantage and that my ADC for some reason took Conquer instead of Lethal Tempo. So, and um, obviously there's a, a volatile top matchup, the Fiora, the Trundle, 
so I'm already thinking about ways to allow the decision making for my jungler to be easy. Um, <clears throat> and I, I also I'm pretty sure the enemy support is Draku. And that's the thing that happens in higher elo. You like you know who you're playing the whole time. So I know I'm thinking about his tendencies and how to punish them. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you think so you think tops of all the time matchup. Mm -hmm. Even the Bottas. jungle's pretty. Yeah. Or, so, so, so bot, you get outranged. You don't win the two v two, right? Well, bot is losing, but I'm thinking of ways to make it winning without taking horrible trades. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to contest this mid bush, and this mid bush is extremely important in determining the prio level one, the, the first couple waves so they so shouldn't allow me this. to get this yeah they, they shouldn't allow me to get this ward here they should path straight to the the middle bush they should clear my ward they should get an even deeper ward and push us out of lane so you see there they dropped the ward there um, we're both going to back the sweep <clears throat> and whoever controls that mid lane bush whoever can sit in it and have fog um, will generally get prior of the lane because they're wow. the ones that can zone the enemy support out they can get more orders on the wave they just control the middle of the lane um, so, so that that space. middle brush is like the prior brush in a way exactly wow. so what you'll see in pro games is generally a team that has a hard winning bot lane they will control all either the middle or even the the enemy third uh bush and so they'll walk all the way up here yeah yeah if you have a, a winning lane Okay. And the enemy team will either decide to soft contest maybe their bush, or they will just concede. They won't drop the wards. They will keep their ward just to ward for ganks or for whatever like that. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see. So, so, so what happens here? So, what happens if your Kiana were to start bot, and they would want you to leash? Um. So, if Kiana were to start bot, it 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 depends how I'm feeling. If I'm feeling really <laughs> cocky. <laughs> I might contest for this anyway. I'm pretty confident on Bard. But what should happen if she starts bot is I will hold my trinket um, and give Pryo in this losing matchup. It's lose gracefully. Reality. Yep. And just drop a ward over the wall onto the, the river bush and, and chill. So the mindset, though, is if you can contest Pryo, you should always want to contest Pryo. Yeah. I, I would say even if you lose Pryo, make them make you lose prior don't yeah. just you, uh, it's, it's a weird way of winning yeah no no i totally I, I actually really like that mindset like it's like you you want them to work for it because mm -hmm. they're like i would talk about the mid lane like you want to even if you're in a losing matchup you still want to overwhelm their mental stack that's what i call it you want to overwhelm yeah. the mental stack. make them think hard about it so make, okay yeah you'd make so, them prove to you why it's a bad matchup for you. Don't just like <laughs> sit at your tower in AFK, you know? <laughs> you know what's hilarious? Like I'm getting I'm getting flashbacks to when we were coach, when I was coaching in 20, 2018. Like yeah. this is so funny. The way you talk <laughs> about the game, very unique. Um, all right, so so this is very important because I, I mean, I don't know jack shit about lane positioning in bot lane and all that sort of thing. So yeah. I, all I know is that this levels like one to two is crucial, Yeah. right? Sure. Yeah. So, so, so walk me through step by step. I want you to get very specific. What's your okay, mindset? Like, yeah. what are you so, trying to do here? Yeah, let, let's go back already because the sweep, we've already cleared the ward. Yep. So I know there's going to be a con contestion for this mid bush because we both have sweep, we both warded. So she she missed micro She stepped forwards too much. I used my auto passive and my Q and then I got out. I knew that's the end of the trade. If I just blindly follow forwards, I'm going to get out traded. So I knew my limits there. I got my three stacks of my Spell Thieves. Yep. You should never take Spell Thieves, but I don't care. I just like using it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. And yeah. Um, but <clears throat> I, I got the decent trade. I cleared their ward, and now the state of the lane is developing. And they have too much range. My ADC didn't take lethal tempo, which you should in range matchups to contest shove. So we're just going to lose gracefully now. Okay. So, so TLDR, it's like, it's like, if you can get the shove for level two, you should, cause then, and, and being positioned in that bush will allow you to kind of exert more pressure. Like, so just, yeah. I know this might be a, a basic question, but like, why not over here? Like why here? So if I'm not constantly in fog, I can just get ordered because they outrange me. Right. Okay. And I and wouldn't then, be able to oh, order okay. that. So just go back a, a second or two. I just mm. ordered that range minion and I wouldn't be allowed to do that. So if you watch my movements, I'm going to try to order the way as much as I can without getting punished. So here I'm going to order the range. I'm going to get out. 
Okay, so you can kind of reset the And then I cut it back into fog. I try to get another auto and the shove's gone. So I'm trying to contest mm. the shove. And if I'm just out in like on the river side and I'm trying to auto the range units, I'm just going to get... You get uh, pushed out that way. You'll kind of get pushed up into the river in a way as well. I, if really I, would, I, would, I would get chunked autoing that minion because I'm not in fog. So the, Got you. the center can just right click on me. And, Got you. Yeah. And so I'm looking for trading patterns where I have my stacks of Spell Thief and I proc all of them with my Q and my order. And that's how I'm going to play um, to generate gold. And so you wouldn't really need to do those trades if you took um, the Relic Shield, right? Yeah, not really. I just I personally prefer having mana regen. It helps my ADC with sustaining a bad lane with my W spam. Mm -hmm. And I can do more chad's decisions with like using a lot more spells in general okay. throughout the game so what's going through your mind here so you're, you're getting pretty shit on here right you mm -hmm. get out of range you're getting poked down what's going through your mind at this moment i want us to hit the wave as little as humanly possible so that it pushes away from us as slowly as humanly possible which will um, give our jungler time to do whatever he wants to top and then base come back bot and help us crash the wave if we're hitting the wave a lot um, the wave the wave is going to be further away from safety and from our tower so if we only last hit the the wave is gonna the waves are gonna crash on our side of the lane right ah uh, sorry so and, and 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 if you're versing a bad bot lane they'll just keep shoving you in and you just get free yeah, farm right? and then we just free farm so they uh... yeah they they should not hit the wave and we should not hit the wave got you okay so yeah ideally for them they shove it they bounce it and then they create like a gang setup or something yeah. and yeah this yeah. is all about buying as much space and time for our adc to collect minion waves um in a losing matchup got you okay so, as so long okay as this is all is losing on, gracefully yeah as long as the wave is on our side then our adc is safe to farm yeah. and yeah what once their support takes a horrible trade um, they lose a lot of pressure in decision making. So right now I'm just going to collect my chime. I I believe I was worried about their jungle um, contesting our camp. So I have kind of one window to screw around with them. They decided to shove the bot wave, so I wasn't needed in lane to buy space for my uh, ADC. So, so, so your ah, uh, so you're thinking you're here. I can only do this because the wave is in such a safe spot, right? You're not just yeah, yeah. ditching. Oh, I see chime. I go. It's like well, yeah, yeah. They, the wave's they in a good a spot. Trade. They they made a bad trading decision. They made a bad wave management decision, and this allows me to just do whatever I feel like. And so that all ties back to that fundamental of waves, doesn't it? In a way, it's like. Mm -hmm. It's like you're do you're able to to find those windows, and in a way, that's kind of like I don't know if this is correct, but you, you you're trying to m get as much information as possible without screwing over your jungler as your yeah, AD carry as well, right? Like you're trying to find yeah. those windows to help your jungler without screwing over your AD carry. Yeah, it's like a priority list. As long as my ADC is allowed to farm, then I'm going to go and pressure the map as hard as I possibly can. Right. So priority number one is always keep your, it's, it's always prioritize your AD carry, right? It's exactly. Basically. Yeah. 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 Prioritize yeah. wave states. Sometimes yeah. your mid laner is going to have a horrible wave state and then you want to help your mid laner. Right. So it's not even about like the champion. It's just about the wave states. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's period. Yep. Wave states. Good yeah, wave so state. He can farm. Yeah. The, the decision is influenced if there's like a really volatile mid matchup, let's say it's like a rally of his Yone, then I'm going to be drawn to there more because they're going to be in each other's faces. They're not going to be safe and I can potentially influence it. Like there's just a higher priority in being near that. But still, mm. if it's a safe Azir Corky lane, but one of them has a horrible wave state and he can only farm with spells and he's dropping CS, I'm going to go help that as well. Right, but this is all in reference to champions that roam as well, right? Like if you're if you're playing Nami or something, you're you're not really thinking about mid wave. You're thinking about how can I play the waves in a way to dominate our opponent or in the two v two. Exactly. Yeah. yeah if I'm yeah. Nami and I'm winning lane as I should, then I'm thinking about yeah, just winning lane as hard as I can and yeah. warding for lane okay. for our lane. So so here, so you come back. Wave still. I mean, they're still just permanently shoving you in, which is just great for you, isn't it? What they should do is either stack a wave and then crash a stacked wave and then base, or try to orchestrate a freeze. And they're doing neither. So this makes our job very easy and just yeah. collecting 
this ping pong wave on exactly. the tower. Exactly. You're time. just playing ping pong here. And yep. so this is what you would usually see. And you see this this sort of gameplay in a lot of like low level like VODs, right? Like a platinum and diamond and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So what, what would happen if they stacked a wave and crashed is that they would have much more time to get that base and they wouldn't They'll get have that to, reset. Yeah, like a whole nother wave is being killed by them. So then their support has a lot more time to move. Their ADC will not miss any minions. But if they shove one wave and then they base and then we shove the next wave, they're going to lose minions to the tower. So, yeah. Got you. So you guys decide to go for a reset again. They're not stacking waves. I think it looked like you based on a cannon, I think, but you're not, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, they, they cheesed in the brush and I think the yeah. ADC got chunked out pretty hard. But, yeah, okay. Um, you had no yeah. choice, yeah. Yeah. So this one, why? So how do you determine here coming out of base between going straight back bot and then going mid here? Right. Um, so for Bard, I'm always going to portal through the wall towards bot because it's just yeah. more efficient. Yeah. And then I'm keeping my eye on mid and jungle. Yeah. And I'm going to collect these chimes to get XP and get some move speed and determine if there's anything proactive um, in the river. But I decide that <clears throat> we should try and crash this wave so that I I can I can move. Th there were two decisions we can we can yeah, have yeah, yeah. here. The two decisions are slow push and I roam mid, or hard shove. And Aphelios has the blue gun, so he can potentially hard shove. So if I get to crash this wave on like this losing bot lane matchup, it's it's really good in me just like sprinting towards mid. And the reason that's the case is because it will shove, it will bounce back out to you, then your AD carry safe to farm where you can kind of roam. Yeah, exactly. Correct. Uh, yeah. So every, and this is why I love support in reference to, to to mid lane because mid lane is so similar. Mid lane is all about wave states. With mid lane is all about okay, am I am I going to slow build into poke under tower? Or am I going to slow build into harass? Am I going to am I, I going to shove and bounce it so I can have the way for my side to set up a gank? Or am I going to you know hard shove and then just you know so I can get to that scuttle fight? It's always wave states dictate your behavior. But it all ties to champ identity. I mean, it ties about what you, what your champion is good at. Is your champion want to play for roams, or does it want to play for lane domination? So yeah, I love this. So I mean, I'm trying to tie this back to the trio fundamentals. This is again yeah. waves and roaming, and know how those waves. are connected. Yeah. Waves, 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 waves. And I love this yeah. is actually helping me so much. And I'm thinking mm. how much I've messed up my support games. We're going to see it in my games. I don't think about really. Waves nearly enough, and I think I really screwed my AD carry over. <laughs> yeah. So here I'm, I'm prioritizing waves. I'm going to shove this, and then I'm going to, um, hopefully move into fog and pressure right. the map. So that's the waves, and then the fog warrioring. There's no point in me just standing in bot, trying to hit tower or something. I'm pressuring yeah. the map. I see volatility mid. Cool. I'm going to time the sums. Cool. And I know that I have so much time to just do anything I want because we crashed our bot wave and it's going to slow push back to us. So I'm not going to be bot lane for quite a while here. And it just helps that there's volatility here, right? Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's like, well, why not, right? There might be yeah. volatility, there might not, but it doesn't matter. You're yeah. still exerting pressure. Yeah, if, if there wasn't volatility, I'm going to help my jungler get this camp. I'm going to remain in fog so they don't know what we're doing. And yeah, this is drawing their support towards this mm. whole thing as well and, um, and the other thing i will note here and you got to remember that you, you like a common question i get is like if i roam my 80 carry dies well it's case by case basis isn't it it really does depend on i mean as, as long as the wave is good that's up to the 80 carry isn't it like so exactly i'm assuming you've had coaching clients in like say gold or plat right and they say things yep. like Oh, my AD carry gets engaged on. Well, that would just depend on the tendencies of, uh, tendencies of players at that rank. Like, what would you say to a client that says that? Like, imagine if your Aphelios yep. dies. That's not on you, is it? Yeah. That's you, up to the Aphelios. You have to have two things in your mind. You're roaming at the right time with good wave states. Mm -hmm. And you're you're doing a few pings just to alert them to what you want to have happen. So that's okay. all that's in your control, right? You're communicating to your team and you're doing the best play possible. Yep. Whatever happens from there, it happens, you know. As long as the okay. wave state is good and you've thought about it and you've communicated yep. it, that's it. There's only so much yeah. you can do. Yeah, you can't control your ADC. Um, over 100 games, your decision is going to result in a net positive. So yeah. it doesn't matter if your ADC dies a couple times. You're going to remember the ones where they do die because that's just how 
the, the human brain works you remember mm. the enemy you remember mistakes more but exactly. just do what's in your control play well communicate and then who cares so then we um look, we get caught out it, it is what yep. it is i mean you know yeah you just get collapsed it on it happens all right so we come back um wave still slow building out towards your fellows and this would be the worst time to roam wouldn't it like as the wave is slow building and stacking because then you're yeah. if you're not here roaming your adk will get zoned and and Probably just or, or get dove yeah so i have to make sure my adc will collect this coming wave and then as long as he's gonna be able to collect it then i'm happy yep. it looks like they're not diving great so, so I'm, now I'm, I'm gonna yeah, I'm going to try to deny them getting plates, but once they're not going to use this wave to pressure at all, I'm either going to decide to crash the following wave um, or move. So we'll see which one I choose to do. So right now you're thinking, okay, the wave's bouncing back out. I usually You're trying to usually get this wave out though. Yeah. Depend if yeah. they stay or not though. It depends if they stay or not. Right. It's going to be hard for us to stack and crash a stacked wave so maybe we're just going to try to crash this and then i'm going to move again but okay. i'm always looking to try and move because there's not too much we can do in the 2v2 so here i'm going to posture forward so that they're not threatening the freeze mm. and yeah once they do that it's, it's just at, at this state i can't remember the adc items but i felt a little bit more comfortable to contest 2v2 prior right okay. so this wouldn't be possible in the earlier levels as we saw um Okay. But yeah, I'm feeling a little bit more confident. Yeah. And, and so one thing that I've noticed here, like, I, I feel like these bot lane you're versing just have, are just terrible with waves. Like, mm, shouldn't they, I thought here they should, I mean, so if you were, okay, let's, let's actually reverse the roles here. And this is an exercise yeah. I do in mid lane. Like, if you were in their shoes, what would you want to do? Like, would you, would you want to then threaten the freeze here? Or what would you want to do? Yeah, I would definitely want to threaten the freeze. Especially yeah. because you can see their red is coming up, so their jungler probably wants to pass towards the mm. side of the map. Creating that freeze, uh, yeah, is definitely an option. This okay. is like just the worst for them. If we just get to soft shove every wave, they need to yeah. either stack and dive or freeze. And if they yeah. don't, then they're going to get hard outscaled because center support has to win lane. Yeah, and because it just you're, he's just gonna, she's just going to get out roamed, out pressured, out utility. Mm -hmm. Exactly. In a way. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, and then you're just getting free scale. You and a fellow are just getting. This free. is like this is so good for me. Getting like perma shove and uh, free scale and river control. It's just going to be extremely hard for them to play out the game now. Mm. And it's so funny that people watch this with like, well, this this seems normal. This feels like you know doesn't scale center scale fine. Like they're probably thinking like that, but no, you, you, you're factoring in the amount of pro like pressure you're exerting on the map. Yeah. Just by simply being out of vision. Yeah, I get so much freedom to carry by um, moving in fog. And Senna can just, Senna has to just sit bot, try to get souls, get prior, get plates. And if she doesn't, then she's going to be useless. It doesn't matter mm. if she has infinite scaling, like she's just going to be useless. Yeah. And so right now, uh, and I love what you do. This is your bar special. You walk up, you stand next to walls and just eat out. Yeah, I'm, out. I'm taking, I'm trying to make the lane a little bit more volatile because we have control of the wave. Um, we have numbers on bot side of the map and it's going to make their future decisions a little bit harder. So in general, if you're a strong side, you want to take heavy trades. And if you're a weak side, you want to avoid heavy trades. Right. So you're actively thinking here um, before you take this trade or like my jungle's in the area um you want more volatility you want more heavy trading such that your jungle is going to be more incentivized to come by yeah that that's one done. and another is i have three stacks of spell thief and i'm just gonna chad trade to prop yeah. all of them for a lot of money as well so both of okay. them yeah yeah um so <laughs> at this point you're feeling pretty safe i mean a fellow the way seems relatively even i mean each seems okay i mean you're exerting pressure out of vision so what's your mindset now it's just like you're just now trying to fog warrior right tying back to that second yeah. fundamental we we have river control <clears throat> we have this pink they know that we control the side because we took dragon recently yeah so my adc is never going to get alfred off of minions so i just spend a lot of time in fog uh, and all right, let's slow it down let's break because i think there's a yeah. lot here what you just said that might not mean a lot to a lot of people yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so you said you okay so you, First things first, you have river control. So river control is dictated by how much vision you control in the river, right? Yep. 
Yep, and they're you, not going to have any vision of the river. They have no vision. You've got the scuttle yep. here. You've got the pink ward in this brush here. You, you mean, you've got good quality deep wards over here. Your jungler's posturing over here. You've got the man advantage everything. So, and then you said, um, because you've got the vision control, because you've got the river control, they can't walk up aggressively and zone him from the wave. Yep. Correct? And so um, that's why you feel confident in leaving him alone because um, the fellas can walk up and still farm even if you're not showing or not here technically in the lane because they don't yeah. know what you and Kiana are doing. Mm -hmm. So you're exerting pressure. You and Kiana are exerting pressure onto the center and the sire without even theoretically being there. Yeah, and onto and, the, the mid as well. And onto the mid. So you're actually exerting pressure in two different places without even... Yeah. Committing to either place. Yeah. And that's what river control, and that's what prior does, that's what river control does, that's what hovering out of vision does, essentially. Yeah. So I think I should fog a little bit more here. I saw my AD carry get a bit chunk, so I walked into lane to drop a W, but I think what I should be doing is just being permanently in fog here. Um, so never show, just permanently. Yeah, here. yeah. I have my level 6. XP no longer matters on me, so <clears throat> I should have been in fog that whole time, threatening to counter jungle camps or to pressure mid, something like that. Right, okay. Yeah, that's one thing I have noticed. I don't think you've panned your camera mid that often. Is that because you just thought it wasn't killable? I'm I'm constantly looking at the, the minimap waves. Right. So I okay. should probably use camera control a lot more, but I'm always looking at the minimap. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Okay, so now their talons come bot to maybe relieve a bit of pressure mm -hmm. and get Vish some control back. This Ophelios is chatting them out, holy moly. Yeah. So they, they got the shove, which we can't really stop 2v3. Yeah. And now I'm posturing. I know a common recall location is over there for the ADC. So I just want to... I know that they wanted to shove the wave in base. And I'm trying to make that as hard as possible. Yep. So I couldn't stop the shove. I'm trying to stop the bases. And now they did base. We're going to hard crash this. And now we, we can make decisions as to get plates... I think I'll probably want to spend... I'm staying out of uh, plate range there. I'm trying to greed for my money. Ah, oh, so you were trying to stand outside of plate range so if Elios gets all the... Ah, okay. That's nice. Such a nice support. <laughs> yeah, golden right. XP does not matter on support, so... Yeah. Okay. Great. I so I'm, su I'm actually... Su yeah, I th I'm surprised you did just reset right here. Yeah, I, I really wanted to spend my oh, to use my three spell thief stacks. Uh, it's quite a hard lane to use it. It's just yeah. this is this isn't optimal. I'm just greeting. I'm being because tempo would be would, tempo would be more important on bard specifically. Yeah, definitely. I should have based and got in my tier two boots and sprinted mid here for sure. Yeah. Okay, so we come back. Um, game state. I mean, again, volatile top. Uh, they seem to be winning the top matchup. Aphelios yep. has now got shield bow. So what's running through your mind here? What are you, what are we what are we thinking? Well, I'm just really happy and confident because I know that the bot lane, the enemy bot lane has failed to execute their identity and we have successfully like minimized and our top side is strong and winning. Um, and you don't need to really be bot now because the wave is in a good spot temporarily. I mean, as long as he slow builds, right? If he started hard shoving it yeah. or something, then it'd be a bit of a yeah, problem, but he's not going to do that. You can see the minimap. He's very close to his tower. He's not mm -hmm. under any threat. So I'm just, I, I noticed some volatility around mid. Um, so I'm just going to be posturing around here because it's better than being AFK bot. Yep. So and, you're trying to, yeah, okay. This makes yep. sense. So hopefully what happens here is I help prior this wave and then I shift back down to bot side to ensure the crash of that wave. Ah, okay. So it's, again, it's all waves. It's all waves. You're trying to maximize your pressure while the waves are in good wave states in bot. Yeah. F help fix other waves and get, create good wave states in yeah. other lanes and then make sure when the wave is getting into it, not, not when it's in a bad spot, it's when it, it could be potentially in a bad spot, yeah. heading into a bad spot, then you're there. The information is always there as to what's going to happen to the next wave and you should be constantly thinking about what that's going to look like. So I didn't immediately path bot because uh, if you remember, Senna was around mid as well. Mm. So then mm. my ADC wasn't under threat of being zoned off of the waves because uh, yeah right so Senna so if Senna went straight back bot and then Senna didn't come here you would actually not have pathed up you probably would have just went straight back down yeah. bot right Senna should be bot here they can't yeah this isn't worth what they're doing Senna well, should well this be isn't Senna's identity no and they I mean... can't they, they can't contest prior for that wave without teleporting so now they teleported for like one wave of prior and then my ADC is chilling I think he's getting a little bit yeah. 
he should be <laughs> safely crashing the wheel instead of diving on golems, but you know. So what I love about this, and this is what the mental game, and this is, I view this as a mental game. This center is playing your game. So you've actually, in a way, like, and this is what people don't understand. I've, and I've, I've noticed it, it just from my limited time playing supporters that, like, especially in the lower ranks, like, if you were to play a master tier, right, for example, supports panic when another support roams. And that's why I think Bard is so yeah. powerful because it's like, well, Bard wants to roam. That's that's his identity. And then like the en- and then like the enemy Nami or something tries to like follow, yeah. and you're like, what are you doing, man? Like yeah. you just. And they panic. They're, he's playing your game right now. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't know what his champ actually does. And it would be the <laughs> same if they were like Nami or Lulu or something. They yeah, need yeah. to they need to choose their fights well. They need to play around lane and yeah, what they do, which is... And they're never lane. stacking waves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they messed up a lot early. And now that I'm level 7 and it's a bit later into the game and we, we get to keep control of Bot River, their decisions become extremely difficult. Because if they try to stack waves now and we have Bot River, I'm just going to ult their heads, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow, that's such a good play. Unfortunately, doesn't work. But a good play. So, so again, your thought process is, well, look, okay, you got you got to help to make sure, in a way, you're kind of escorting to make sure that if Elias is able to kind of catch that wave, right? I think this is almost exclusively... a proactive play that um, mid was looking off of blue or something right right i think right. we're we're no longer in a really bad state 2v2 just with how the the whole game is played out. right so you're just chilling you're now not just adapting free flow whatever happens happens like if, yeah. if syndra wants to make a play bot you facilitate that if yep. there's not a I'm play unlocked. that's okay you're unlocked yeah. yeah yeah i like that word you're unlocked you're just now you're just free flow yeah. i'm no longer like attached to bot lane because bot lane is is chilling two v two. So where are you prior? So when you when you want river control, where are you prioritizing your wards? At? Like what what are you trying to where are you where are you trying to ward most of the time? So I'll have that pink um, in the in, in the, the river, yeah. river bush. Yeah, yeah. I'll have that there so that I can just dip into fog and they don't have any information of it. Okay. And then I will ward over dragon pit as you can see that little blue dot. Yeah, this dragon one over there. there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's not going to get pinked out. No one pinks over there. I like that. I'm playing around them having this pink here, so if we eventually can contest this pink, which we do now because their bot lane dies, we can get that. Otherwise, I'm not going to ward that while they're in lane because they're just going to clear it instantly. Okay. Um, yeah, this is just basic um, river control. Make sure that you pink river and then you drop your green wards on their side of like their territory of what they control. Yeah. yeah. So you control so defensive your pinks, pinks, offensive offensive vision trinkets yeah you you put your pinks on the edge of your territory and you put your greens on the edge of their territory and then you try to push that green line forwards if possible got you and now look same thing you're not needed to be bot right now he's just hitting the tower he's safe and now we're just skirmishing with our team making sure that we're facilitating the dragon pretty straightforward Mm -hmm. and now the game this game is just so done Um, yeah their, their bot is useless yeah, they, I'm just going to carry by just sitting in river and pressuring lanes and they just can't do anything about it. And now the lane. And so so now this is a common question. So you've got that bot tower and, um, you know, we've got the dragon with skirmishing, you know, pretty straightforward. Now, what do you what do you think now? How do you determine between swapping mid and swapping top? It should always be swapping top. Just picture if you put your bot lane mid. So you have so we're, we're strong, right? Mm-hmm. We got bot tower we're accelerated we're also two champions which is significant so if we put our duo mid and we we can't really stack a wave and threaten to dive mid right the lane is too short Mm. we can't we we can't just blow up the tower either it's the, the the lane is too short to make a lot of decisions so let's say they put one champion mid. It doesn't mm-hmm. even have to be their mid lane. It's just either a Felios or a Kali. They're mm-hmm. going to catch waves under tower, and then mm-hmm. they're going to have a number advantage top. So then they're going to pressure top, and we're going to pressure mid. Well, okay, this, this is yeah. this is in depth. Cause I I, 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 I uh, kind of disagree. I mean, I kind of okay, disagree. Okay. And let's let's talk about this because this yep. is an interesting one. So my theory is that if you are playing a roam oriented support. This is just from my feeling playing. Mm-hmm. I prefer to go mid 
not because we're going to do anything immediately around mid, but it, because it feels like I'm more unlocked. Like I have access to the entirety of the map as a bard. Conversely, if I say I'm playing someone that's more lane dominant, I prefer to swap mid top because then you have, it's much easier to stack ways into like dive slash kill the tower. But if I if I'm playing like a bard and we swap top, I mean sure, I mean I can still get th you know theoretically pressure top and mid. Like if we were to go over here, swap top, like we can I could kind of pressure this and this, but I can't pressure this at all, and I can't punish this long lane state. You know what I mean? That's how I feel anyway. Right. So if if bard was mid here, yep. there's a long lane top, and Syndra or Phyllis is not going to be safe to farm. Um. Just, just, just imagine like no one died and there wasn't volatility. If mm, if mm. our duo goes mid here and Syndra mm. goes top, mm. she is under a lot of pressure mm. in that long lane by herself. If she goes top, well, but but she, but you guys will get prior mid though, right? So you should yeah, control so top river regardless. I'm I'm gonna be leaning top, so I'm, I'm pretty much top. There's two yeah. top. I'm leaning top instead yeah. of mid. Right. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's, yeah. yeah. If, if Syndra is top i'm gonna to be top yeah so, so that's what i'm saying so it's better for isn't it so why why would isn't it better for you to be the 80 carry to be mid than rather than the 80 carry be top or does it not really matter it just doesn't matter well, like, honestly just gonna be... the 80 and the mid doesn't really matter yeah but yeah. The, where i am matters a lot okay so i'm gonna ensure that whoever is top can farm Right, so it, it actually doesn't really matter. It depends on then that how good that champ is in the side lane then. So that's why you yeah, think Syndra it, may be better mid. The, yeah, the things you have to take into account are how much wave clear does a champ have. If there's like an Akali and they are top, then they, they can't like shove as quickly. Mm. You have to think about solo XP. So... Mm. Um, a lot of champions really need levels and you don't want to share XP with them. But in general, all I really prioritize is ensuring my carries can farm. Right. So so here's a perfect example, right? So Lane and Simons get swapped up. Sindhu stays bot here, right? Goes bot. So now your mindset coming out of base is, okay, I'm just going to be playing mid to bot, right? Yeah. The, yep. the, the decisions here are really easy because the only objective left to play for is mid outer. So I'm going to be controlling around mid here. And second rift doesn't really matter. A rift at this point in time doesn't really matter that much. Um, yeah. The fact that they still have mid-outer, it is still important, but I'm going to prioritize whatever is happening over here first. So Sin they're... Syndra, protecting your mid, your mid is more important than like trading sides and like, going for rift. Yeah, yeah. We're in a position yeah. where we can just get everything. So Syndra yeah. shouldn't have actually... I think Syndra should have been um, yeah, on mid-wave with the team she's so yeah that's so ridiculous she should, she should just be here hovering with the team yeah. then go down late or like look for a play around here or something. yeah exactly yeah yeah that's just bad I don't know what the hell she's doing yeah okay so so but TLDR here your main mindset is okay vision I want to hover towards my mid laner here get vision on that side I, I mean mid you don't really need to protect your Felios anymore because the lane is so yeah. short there's nothing really can happen so you're yeah. now just you're just unlocked thinking about hovering your jungler in your mid laner essentially controlling areas yeah Okay. You can see, like, they, they had wards in that dot bush. They had wards around their jungle. So yeah. I'm trying to clear that. Once that's cleared, I can get deeper vision. Once I have deeper vision, Syndra can play like a Chad. But she yep. just went way Lovely. too quickly. Okay, so moving on. We've got another one. We've got a Lulu game. Yep. So, do you remember this one at all? No? <clears throat> nah, but it's okay. Okay, so we've got a Lulu Draven versus Zaya Pike. So what's... Looking at this right now, what's running through your mind? Um, yeah, the, the pike means that he's looking for volatility and um, kill threat, and I want to just shove and scale and get lane prior. Okay. So basically, I'm thinking about staying behind minions and making sure that no one is in kill range. Um, yeah. That's basically it. So it's, it's a lot simpler, isn't it, when you're playing an enchanter? It's a lot simpler. Yeah, exactly. Because you don't really have lane. to think about the map as much. Yeah, I want to lane, I want to scale, okay. and then I'm just going to buff up my ADC. Okay, so we, we're actually leashing this time. Um, mm -hmm. And so this base, this reduces the likelihood of you being able to contest for level 2. Yeah, it's really hard on your bot lane if your um, enchanter has to leash, because Pike could be in that middle bush, mm. and if he's in that middle bush 
and we tried to contest prior, then we could you're get screwed. jumped on and killed or something. So right, so you're kind of really scared right now. And I, then when yeah. you see that they leashed, it's like okay, that's that's a really it's, a, it's a little bit better, but you really yeah. shouldn't make your enchanters leash. They need a. I mean, their identity is leaning. They have because the now you're but, getting shoved in, and now this is already. It's it's unfair, yeah, yeah, it's a little bit scary for us. So ideal, and 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 because Pike was able to, or you weren't able to start in lane, he's kind of chatted you out, and now yeah. he controls this, which means that you're forced to like give control. Right? There's That's no way I can here. just walk into that bush no. without having the good wave. So if I'm in lane, I can order, I can use my range advantage to get like a stacking wave, then I can control that bush. But just right. even, I can't face check a Pike. So yeah, I'm trying to order as much as I can to like potentially contest for level two, but here it's like nah. Okay, so he wastes his Q, so now I'm gonna Q a lot. Right. I so, so if it, so, this was this is something that you've mentioned in some of your clients that you see, um, a common problem you said, and we're gonna talk about this later. But if it, yep. if the enemy uses key cooldowns, it's your responsibility to kind of calibrate and be like, well, what the hell are you doing? You don't have abilities now. Now I can kind of wrestle mm -hmm. back control, right? Yeah. So you initially never planned on trying to contest level two, but. No. I mean, and Pike shouldn't even be over here, right? Pike should still no, be in should, here, right? He should be in fog there, definitely. He should just be here chatting you out, forcing yep. you to walk back up here, which makes it harder for you to order these creeps. Yeah. Like you should, it should be illegal for you to order these creeps, shouldn't it? From here. Pretty anyway. much. Yeah, definitely. But then he then walks up and then wastes his queue, and then that rings alarm bells. Yeah. You're thinking now, boom, I can now walk up and do whatever I want to contest level two. So you're pinging on my way to try and suggest that you're going to try and get level two here, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yep. So we get level two. He still doesn't have Q. I'm trading. So maybe we can go back to my first yeah. trade before he missed his Q. Yeah, let's go back. Over so I, I have, yeah. What the hell so, is Pike doing here? So this is just not good from Pike, is it? No, he's, he's, yeah, he should be in, in so Pike should just bush. be over here and then yep. going in and out of fog, exerting pressure onto this guy to prevent Draven from auto attacking these, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. And you're too scared to walk up here because he could just theoretically hook you, then you're you're in Narnia. Yeah. And you're screwed. It's, yeah, us leashing is the lane is already pretty doomed. But if if he allows me to order these minions, I'm gonna order them, right? If he's and then that trade there, um, I know what kind of trades I'm looking for. I can e auto and then just get the hell out and stand get the behind hell out, minions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so in a way, the way I'm viewing this entire like level one here is that you're trying to, you're like walking that tightrope. You're trying to like, you're trying to maximize your out, your damage onto the minions without putting yourself in a volatile position. Exactly. And, yep. Okay. I'm contesting shove as much as humanly possible. Pushing those limits. Yep. And then, um, and then as I soon as, so go on. Yeah, he doesn't have Q here, so I don't I don't care about his level two spike. Yeah. So I, I have like kind of a mental timer on his Q cooldown. Mm. So I, I didn't really care um, about him walking up. I got that auto, I got that Q, but then my ADC gets yeah, rooted, rooted, gets yeah. Q'd. So here he's he's just into like straight up. <laughs> like what well, what can I do? <laughs> yeah, <your> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so that's okay. It is what it is. Out of your control. We timed the flash. As well. That's good. Yep, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't see that in Golden Plat as much, but you know. No. Yeah. Lulu, what are you doing? <laughs> yep. Noob support. <laughs> All right. So, um, so we come back. Not much we can do. And now they kind of stack two waves in a way, right? So they should theoretically reset here, right? They, sh they should definitely find a reset. They have kill gold as well, so that makes a reset more enticing to get that item spike of theirs. So what's going through your mind here? What, what are you thinking? Um, it's it's rough for us. We're playing Draven Luli. We really need to have lane control. Yeah. <laughs> you're up shit creek here. Yeah. So, so you're um, trying to hard shot though to get this wave out, I'm assuming, so you can then reset yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's, and if you don't get this wave out, you're screwed. Yeah, it's a, it's this is a little greedy from me. I think the absolute best play is to slow push, crash either a two or three stacked wave, and allow our jungle to come and fix it. But oh I, no, this is a bit of a macro limit test. I knew this is risky, but I'm just trying to chat it. And then Pike Rome, look at that. You're so lucky. Imagine if Pike beeline because if you were Pike, right? Walk. So let's again do the role reversal here. If you're Pike, you go off this reset here. I mean, there's no way you're going to roam mid here, right? I mean. No, no. I mean, mid is volatile, but 
it's too good of a reset window, right? Our wave is bad. Oh, you mean for Pike? Yeah, for Pike. For oh, Pike, for yeah. Pike. Um, yeah. It, it's If he does roam mid, then his tempo is really bad, and he can't be bot for a very long time, because he'll right. need a base after the mid roam and then come bot. So, so it would be, he would only roam mid, right, if that was like a guaranteed roam, correct? Pretty much, yeah. If the yeah. wave is really bad for Silas and he has to overextend. It can also okay. be like kind of a cheese play where you expect them for you to not roam, so then you just do it right. anyway, but it's, right. it's never the best play on paper. Right, okay, so so if you're Pike here, you're thinking, okay, I reset, and so Pike would be just panning his eyes to like the minimap and looking to see what you guys do with the wave. If yeah. you stack waves, he would probably roam before coming bot, right? Yeah, honestly, Pike, Pike has so much time because he never has to be bot for like the next several minutes after he killed our ADC. Because this, this stacking wave, right, we... We can't we can't freeze if we crash we can't dive so no but like but 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 what I'm saying here a cupcake is like it, 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 it what he does should depend on what you do with the wave so if you stack waves yeah he doesn't need to be here at all but if you hard shove like you're doing here wouldn't it be better for Pike to go straight bot because he knows that it's a pretty small wave your oom your waves kind of screwed and you didn't stack therefore you're oh, vulnerable oh right you know what if I mean we're, if we're yeah he should prevent our crash. Yeah, so he should just run straight bot here, shouldn't he? Because he sees that you didn't stack the waves here. You're just hard chopping. Yeah, yeah. His Am I correct in saying that? Is, yeah, his two decisions are to allow the crash and pressure around mid jungle or to yeah. contest the crash. Right, okay. So that would just depend on the way you like to play the game, essentially. Uh, you have to look at the champs. Like, can they contest this crash with Draven Lulu as Zaya Pike? Uh, I'm not sure. If he runs straight bot here. We're gonna we're gonna get this wave in regardless. Right, it's a okay. big wave. We have ranged champions. Yeah. Maybe maybe he can look for a really volatile hook or something. Mm. But I, in my opinion, it would it's hard to contest that crash there with our champions. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. But again, I'm just trying it just to tie back to yeah, waves yeah. again. But his decision, yeah, it would all it does again tie back to waves and and react yeah. to what you do. So it's not just about your waves, it's about their waves. It's both of the waves. Yeah, just the wave state of the lane that you're in. Yeah. So Pike has all of this free time to roam because they got that crash. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to bounce into them and then he doesn't have to be bought for a very long time. So you Unless really need a reset to. here though as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I desperately want to reset, but my jungler wants this crab. I remember talking about on stream here about how badly I want to reset. <laughs> and yeah, how yeah. all of this, like I am very reluctantly helping here. Because okay. I am so screwed personally, and because and the reason that's the case, you, why you really want to reset is because the wave is bouncing back out, and you want you need to be there to soak that XP as well and stuff. And yeah. do the, I have yeah. money. I have no mana. Yeah, I, we we had that one window of a good wave state. What is going on here? Why why not just reset here even now? Right? Can't you just reset um, here? Because he, she, she's stacking the wave. She's not hard shoving. So here. I think I'm drawn to ensuring my jungle can get that camp or something. Mm. Because if their duo contests my jungle on this camp, I've seen countless situations where my jungle just gets killed on, en <laughs> on enemy Krugs. Right. Like 1v2. And yeah, I just... All of this time is my jungle forcing me or pretty much forcing me to screw my tempo. So okay, so I this decide. is very interesting, though. This is very, very interesting. So, because you come back, you recognize that the wave is slow building out, right? You, yep. you type freeze, you go in the brush, and I then this guy... Cool. Yeah, because this guy doesn't know if you're sitting here yeah, or yeah. or resetting. That's genius. Yeah. So, so now, really you're really this, pressure. Yeah. From, from their vision, their Lulu is sitting in there and pressuring me off the CS, but I'm going to instant recall and make them wonder where I am. Right, this is perfect. For as long then. as possible. So why... So are you not scared of Draven getting dove here? Or you, what's going on here? Um, yeah, I don't think I'm scared of him getting this wave denied. And there's okay. a lot of volatility here. So whatever happens after this play, I can then have a look at bot wave mm. and prevent the freeze. I mean, prevent the dive. But, yeah. Okay, so, so I remember thinking in the moment here that I am compensating for my teammates' mistakes. 
It's just, if I feel like I've been hard griefed by my jungle this entire early game. Where there's a horrible what fight sense? here. There's a horrible... Okay, so earlier, when he went for that crab and he went for the Krugs, I desperately needed to find a reset to be on the map at a decent time with a good wave state bot. So he forced me to stay on like a lot of gold, on low mana, on good tempo. And then this whole fight here, they took a horrible fight, and I, I'm using my cooldowns to try and save him. Yeah, so, this is compensation for me, though. I, I mean, I feel as though you probably... I mean, you probably didn't need to flash, but yeah. Probably the, didn't the point, need to flash. Yeah. Probably didn't but, need to die. Regardless, it's not important. But the main yeah. important thing is, again, that you feel that this is okay to go for because you felt as though they can't dive Draven and yeah. there's volatility, so, like, why not be here? And then after this play, go straight back bot to catch the collect the wave. Yeah, exactly. Because you don't really want to get behind on XP on, like, an Enchanter as well, right? Like, I mean... Yeah, XP is a little bit more important. Wave yeah. states are still important but yeah getting levels on lulu is is a good thing yeah like i the way i view it as well like pike and bard they just don't need those levels as much definitely not yeah they just need level six and then they should permanently play around wave states yeah okay so now look you're basically up shit creek and at this point you're just thinking all right how do i just stall out this lane right you're just trying to gather as much resources as possible not die to any ganks and just survive and the way you're doing this is again, you're pro you're trying to just, you, you, ideally tying back to what you said in the first part is just last hit, right? Ideally, because yeah. that would maintain or keep the wave here as long as possible. Yeah, and then this wave we can potentially try to crash. Yeah, Th this becomes a bit of a mind game: how much they hit the wave, how much they're contesting our crash. Yeah, but we see they're jungling the top side here, so now we can try to crash this wave. So ideally, though, this wave crashes before the next one arrives because you don't want the wave here at all. Um, yeah, it depends on their jungle, because if the wave is there and it's just 2v2, then we're fine, right? Mm. But if their jungle's in fog and they gank us and the wave is on their side of the lane, it's really scary. Bloody hell, man. This is this is looking scary. <laughs> but I believe uh, at least showed top river. Oh, like, right. Okay, I didn't yeah. see that. So now there, there's not too much to do. We can get soft prio. Okay. Um, so, so this how is going to be... Yeah. So how was this Pike and Zaya messed up? Like, what have they done wrong here? They they aren't pressuring. So we, we talked about Pike pressuring lane brushes a little bit more um, early mm. on, and then I mean they they got the kill and the good wave states um, early as well. So they they did that well, or they punished our ADC dying well, and then Pike has has found some decent roam opportunities. He still hasn't pressured around the bushes enough and he's still he's wasting cues wasting cues way too much so that allows us windows to kind of just shut uh, um, if, and if he stops so so ideally what he should be doing here pike should be sitting in this brush here like forcing you to like be a bit more scared yeah, yeah. and they should be like trying to zone you here and start like freeze it shouldn't they pretty much yeah this pike has just been throwing cues on cooldown and right. it's made our decisions very easy and right late. okay okay yeah so fast forwarding a little bit, it seems like you're in an isolated 2v2 for now. Um, again, Pike's throwing cues to Narnia, every left, right, center. Yep. And you're just getting a free lane. And even though the wave state isn't amazing, I mean, it's just fine, right? It's just fine. Yeah. So here we have a lot of agency because Pike uses Q and he got chunked for a cannon. So I'm trying to And you're to just playing around those cooldowns. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So fast forwarding a little bit, I mean, Elise keeps ganking mid. I mean, this is the downside of playing an Enchanter as well, right? Like, you see all this volatility yeah. mid, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and you'll, you can notice that I'm just in lane a lot more than that Bard game, because right. I want to get experience and scale a little bit more. Okay. All right, lovely. Pretty stock standard. We go for another reset here. Cause, and again, one thing I've noticed as well is that you're more willing just to take an immediate reset. Like like this is, even though it's not amazing, they could theoretically shove it out, right? But it, you just got to spend your gold. You know? If they decide to shove it out, my ADC can cancel his base and collect it under tower. But okay. since it's a cannon wave, it's fine. Um, it should be, it gives us a lot more time to just base. But and the, same the thing, main here. thing the, the main thing is that I'm not planning to contest the next wave of prior. So there's no point in me being on the map at all. So okay. I'm going to base. Well, my ADC does what he wants to do. Stay or base. I don't care. 
Yep, because he's safe for it either way. Yeah, exactly. Yep, and so to here, the wave's under the tower, so <clears throat> ideally Draven now slow builds that, and you kind of do something for a little bit. You've got a little bit of freedom here. Yeah, I think I decide between helping mid and just getting six and crashing bot, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of volatility around here, so I'm going to be here. Yep. This this isn't exactly my champ's identity, but it's better than being bot right now. Yep. Holy moly, this pike. <laughs> so yeah, you're just... And, and again, there's no need for you to be bot tying back the way. So ideally, you know, you're there just pushing out, maybe chatting out the Zaya, but if there's volatility, that takes precedence here because it's not an absolute priority to be bot. Yeah, because there's suppers here as well, right? So that means yeah. <clears throat> that our ADC is safe. Okay. He's not going to get... 1v2 denied the wave. Okay. And now, again, you're just walking that tie rope. Do I need to be bot? Do I need to be mid, depending on where the support is, exactly. depending on the amount of engage and what's happening with, with the bot wave? Yeah. Like, so, for example, if there's an alley and alley's actually not going mid and alley's actually just chat zoning the Draven, you would just beeline bot, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I would definitely make sure that my Draven can crash that wave. Okay, so because I don't want people just like doing what you're doing right now blindly, like watching this video and be like, oh, I'm going to roam 24 7 to help my mid lane and jungle, but uh, their bot lanes is getting zoned from like a blitzcrank, you know? Yeah, like, I, had, I had one window there to just poke my head around mid and then I have to beeline bot. Okay. But once their sub shows, I don't have to beeline bot. Okay, and this is the same premise. You're trying to control the brushes. <laughs> one thing I've noticed is that this pike, again, is very poor at controlling brushes. Mm-hmm. You, you're doing the same warding location there over the dragon wall. You like that one. Because it's safe, it's it doesn't get swept very often. You you can just you show the last ten seconds. Like uh, this has been happening the whole lane, but I'm always trying to keep minions between myself and the pikes. Right. To dodge his Q. So I know my identity. I'm gonna like order the wave. I'm gonna get prior. I'm gonna stand in the lane behind minions, and he should be pressuring and. So, so your mindset right now is how do I maintain priority while keeping myself safe? Essentially, that's yeah. it. Yeah. I'm always and safe the- if I'm behind minions like that. And, and the reason priority is so important is because then it allows you to control river. Yeah, exactly. I can yep. get Easy. river control, I can move mids, stuff like that. And this is relatively straightforward. And now this is the same thing. You're getting good quality vision, we're chatting them out, and now we're just playing that, applying that pressure. All right, yeah. so we'll, we'll cut, this one's relatively straightforward. And as you can see, when you're playing an enchanter like this, it's more about making sure that you're in lane, exerting as much lane pressure as possible, Again, yep. same fundamentals, actually. Just the mindset and the, how often you roam is just a little bit less, isn't it? The same yeah, fundamentals. Yeah. yeah, definitely. All right. So moving on a little bit. Um, let's fast forward to the Rakan game. So actually, actually, one last thing I was going to quickly... And actually, screw the, screw, the, screw the other Lulu stuff. That's pretty straightforward. So we've got a Rakan game here. The only downside is that we don't have the minimap because you, you don't want to get ghosted. That's okay, yep. though. Do you remember this one? Rakan, Jim? Yeah, I remember Close this to... one a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so how would you compartmentalize Rakan as a champion? It's like weak landing, right? It's Is it like a niche weak. count? Is it a niche? Um, it's, you say? it's a tough one. Yeah. You, it's very... I pick it when it looks good with our champs and versus their champs. So I, okay. it's it's a yeah. I guess that's a counter pick. It's mm. you wouldn't just pick this whenever you feel like. You can pick some other champs whenever you feel like. This one's a little bit more situational though. Right. But yeah, very weak lane. Good at punishing champs like Elise and Diana, um, and good with frontline champions like Kane, especially if it's Red Kane. If you mm. imagine champs like Irelia or Yone, who can provide you with an E to engage off of them, because so Rakan primary engage follow up engage kind of. It's good follow up engage, and it's good versus um, champs that are like uh, mobile or they want right. to like get in your face, and then you can kind of get out, or you can you. engage on them one shot, get out, Got stuff you. like okay. that. So same thing. You're trying to control this brush, isn't it? Same thing. Mm-hmm. So what's your, walk me through this one. Uh, just go, go back to the, before the minions crash. So yeah, we're, we're starting in lane here. My ADC is a bit late for whatever reason, but yep, we're going to try and get prior here. <clears throat> I'm going to order a, a few times and now I'm going to control the bush. So I ensured we have prior. My ADC is shoving way too hard here. He shouldn't have queued there. Right, so because you want to slow build, slow building is always better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
the the more waves you snowballed, um, the more time you kind of have to do whatever, or okay. the the less um, free minions they have. Because if you just play that ping pong crash on tower crash on tower then they're just going to collect well, it's so players. hard to punish when they're under here right i mean you mm -hmm. can't punish their, you can't punish your level two exactly yeah. utilize your level two yeah yeah okay. so from my adc spamming cues it crashed on that second wave so now mm. they don't have a bad wave state they can potentially contest prior so because it's just this, refresh it's just like a refresh wave yeah. state so it's going to be very hard for us to crash this third wave and if we try, oh. it's like their jungle can come gank us. We're going to be oh, overextended. So, so what, are you, what are you, are you thinking to, now? We, we have to just give prior here. We have to just play back. Because they're going to get level up. three first. We, yeah, we just we can't contest prior here. Yeah. We'll be out yeah. of position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my ADC screwed up the wave manipulation. So I just accept reality and chill out. So, so, and then specifically, if if the if the Callista Pike were good, they would be posturing up more aggressively, right? Getting ready for yeah. that level three, and then that would be yeah. like kind of zoning you in a way. They could they, theoretically they, just zone you. Yeah, they should just hard engage on the gen as soon as they hit level three as well. Yeah, and 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 then they could stack waves into a reset or or, or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Wow, just it's actually crazy how how, how eye opening this has been for me from the sense that like. The, Everything. I, one thing I know for a fact that I've noticed even watching this is I over push ways. I push and create really awkward wave states. Like I have this like weird thing in my brain where it's like, oh, shoving equals prior equals good, you know? And yeah. it's actually not the case. Sometimes you got to, I mean, it's like mid, you don't want to just hard shove every single wave, right? You want to stack yeah. waves. So yeah, the, the lane is pretty much over as soon as wow. Jen pushed Q on that first wave. Wow, that's actually crazy. Just one yeah. Q on the wave. Yeah, so that, that Q meant that the second wave is going to crash and that second wave crashing means they're going to get prior waves three and four they're going to get a good reset they're going to get river control and scuttle everything mm. like that well it's insane yeah so All ideally right. this is probably like too much information but ideally you crash wave three yep and there's a huge crash wave under their tower yep. the fourth wave comes you start to chip on fourth wave yep. so you get prior on fourth like under wave. tower yeah, even under tower, Jen can yeah. Q order some yeah. some of yeah. that fourth wave. Then you have prior for that rift scuttle timing. Yep. Yeah. And then, like, if their jungle is bot side, and their bot lane is getting shoved in, and they don't have scuttle, they're wasting time. So then you kind of have a lot of time to keep um, building and stacking waves. Bot get a good reset. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, the whole time it's exact same with mid lane. It's exact same. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know exactly what you mean. So, so, so look, right now you're thinking, well, I can't do anything bot, so screw it. There's a fight. I'm going to help my team. Yep. And now you're in like a desperate mindset in a way. It's like, well, I'm, <laughs> it's like, get me I'm out. I'm out of here, dude. <laughs> we got the get, kill. And get me out of that lane. I don't know what the hell Jin was doing here. I don't know why Jin walked this way. Jin should not. Honestly, I hate when ADCs roam like this. Oh, no. I just absolutely hate it. He's going to have no, he's, he has no cooldowns now. And if he dies, Look at that bot wave he's going to lose. Like, ADCs oh, no. need to play selfishly. They oh. need to play around waves. <laughs> and so we survive. And now you're thinking, well, Jin's already missed all that farm. We are so screwed bot lane. Yep. So what's your mindset right now? Well, I I mean, I'm just going to continue to play around waves. I'm <laughs> going to try not to think about how screwed we are, you know? <laughs> yeah, so you're I, thinking, I, okay, look for any roam window you can, though, essentially. Yeah, yep. Like, you, you want to get out of the lane. So as you can see, their support was here. So once again, my ADC is not being pressured. Mm. Um, they can pressure a freeze here, and they should pressure a freeze here. But so, yeah. Sorry to kind of go back on this, but look, one one trend I am seeing in these games is that supports you're versing, they're not recognizing, like they they're, they're defaulting to roaming. And and I think one thing I've seen is that yes, roaming with your favorable wave states is great, but it seems to me that staying or like understanding that way sets a poor in mid lane can sometimes just be better than roaming. Like you can completely screw over this gen here. Yeah. Maybe that's something that I could look to do more. Mm. Um, but yeah, gen can get screwed over here if they're both of their bot lane prevents the crash. And it's like if it's... Pike just hovered out of vision here and like went around here or like instead of going top yeah. here, cause I think Pike goes for a top roam. 
Yeah. Like, I mean, that, but that would ultimately depend on what he perceived to be the win con, right? In his mind, he might think, oh, Kalista's already winning. Like, I kind of got Kalista a good lead. I might as well now translate my lead and pressure to other lanes. But there's another equally vi- equally potentially viable win con is just completely remove Jin from the game first yeah. and then maybe translate leads, right? Yeah. The, the main point is that he has agency to make all of these decisions because of the good wave state. So he can right. gank top, he can gank mid, he can hold bot. It's all of them have value. It's up to you which you think is better. And that just uh, depends on your assessment of the wing con and the way you like to play your champion in a way yeah, as well. Exactly. All of them yeah. can work. All of them can work. Yeah, I like it. So at this point, we're not even really playing the lane. I mean, you're, you're, the reason you're doing this is because you know Pike's roam. So Jin is fine to kind of get the wave out safely by himself. So you don't feel the need to be there. Yeah. So it's like, well, screw it. I'm just going to sit here and deny this. I mean, it's very volatile. I mean, maybe deny a bunch of farm from this Diana. Yeah, because Diana is going to struggle to collect the CS, right? So I know mm. that she's low, she's melee. I'm going to pressure this. And if she doesn't die, she's going to miss the minions. If she can test, she's going to die. So this decision probably, I wouldn't make this decision if it's like a Corky or a Syndra or an Ori. Mm. Um, yeah. I love this. It's great. And now the way's crashed, so now you know the way's going to come back out. So there's actually no need for you to be here right now, is there? You just, just wait. You can yeah. run again, right? Yeah, so my mid laner is basing, my bot lane is basing, so there's really just not much for me to do. I'm just going to be in fog and then make my decision from there. Yep, so you got a little bit of vision above the red and they're just coming down. They're not stacking waves. They should be stacking waves again, right? Why are they hard jobbing? Yeah, they should they should stack as big of a wave as possible and ping their jungle to come and dive or use that huge stacked wave to move mid or do dragon or something. Or, or reset again if you really Anything, wanted to. Yeah. Anything. That's been the biggest trend, man. No one is this so this is just the standard. I mean this is probably just Oris as well. Like Honestly, yeah. To go? It's not many players have like play around waves very well. Fascinating. Even, yeah. Sometimes even internationally. You Wow. Yeah. So have you seen this? Have you? Do you watch ProView? Um, like I have watched a bit of ProView, and I've I've made a few notes of where I think they should do something different with waves. Um, wow. But it's it's good to think about because why I love waves so much is that there's actually there's literally no counterplay. It doesn't matter if yeah. you verse SKT in 2016. It doesn't matter if you verse FPX Dumb One Gear. Like, if you have a good wave state, they literally can't do anything about it. Yeah, that's just the game. Roam. That's just League of Legends. Yeah. You can roam and your ADC can't get punished. So if you just get the fundamentals down, there's like how attractive is having no counterplay in a game like this? It seems so yeah. dynamic, so scary, so convoluted. So random, but, but if it's you not just really. play around waves, it's it's like chess at that stage. They, they, you can't do anything. So, so here as well, so Pikes is realizing, again, that, I mean, I know, to be honest, they haven't really done anything with the way, so Pikes is thinking, screw it, a mobile mid, he, he wants to go mid. So you're thinking, well, you have a choice, you can maybe escort this wave out with the gen, yep. theoretically, right? Or you could just kind of match the Pike and protect your mid. That, again, I'm assuming this is coming from a, from a place of win con assessment, maybe, thinking that maybe Jin isn't the win con, or... Um, yeah, so I don't... Th- I don't think I could have done much bot there. I th- I think we had like like Jin was safe to shove that out, and there was a fight happening around mid. And I'm not going right. to deny or dive the Callista right now. So I I I decided to poke my head and try and help around mid. Right. And now but, the wave's in a really bad spot, and now you're thinking because yeah. right now he sh- Jin shouldn't Jin should have either just simply lost it and kept the wave in the middle, maybe match with the Callista or hard shove yep. and push the wave in, right? Exactly. Last but, hit, slow or hard shove fast. So he's just he, done a mixture of both. He does a bit of both, and now the wave is in an awkward spot, and they can pressure it. And so you're up shit creek again here. Mm-hmm. Yep. And now again, you're just trying to pray that they mess up the wave or limit test to try and get the wave out. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to crash this wave. I don't know why their pike isn't what? threatening. What are they pushes. doing? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm. I mean, I'm not a support player, but like this just does not seem optimal. Yeah. Yeah, Pike should be in the in the lane bushes. Pike should be up here, right? Just chatting you guys out. Yeah, he should kill us. <laughs> Why is he queuing? He's queuing back here from bloody end of the bloody lane. Yeah. Very strange. I mean, as soon as he queues like that, all their pressure's gone. Yeah, so now we. I'm trying to get this wave to crash, even if it here? doesn't. All right. Uh, so honestly, 
I don't even mind dying here because the, the wave is fixed. Like, if they make sure that our wave is frozen outside their tower or they kill the ADC, we're screwed. Oh, yeah. So if they, if they, if they actually thin this out and, like, and like throws this mm -hmm. and then you die, that's just, yeah. like, game's just done. It go, yeah, it goes back to the priorities of, like, ADCs yeah. needing waves. Yeah, and if my yeah. ADC is, is eating every wave, I'm happy. As, even so, if you die, it doesn't matter because you're going to still provide utility regardless. Yeah. So obviously it's better to not die. But if yeah, they yeah. kill our ADC, it is game-changing. And then he, he randomly dies. He gets hit by a cocoon he shouldn't get hit mm. by. Uh, and so if in this situation, by the way, like, let's say there's like a scenario where like, is there ever like a scenario where like you just sacrifice your life to get the wave in? Is that is that... Is that, like, ever happen? Um, and, like... So there are situations where you feel it's a bit dodgy to crash a wave because you don't know where the jungler is. It's like this situation, right? It's right, so you just got to do it, though, anyway. I mean, you just, yeah. there's nothing else you yeah, can exactly. do. Yeah, exactly. If the jungler yeah. isn't here, we crash a wave, good wave state, cool. If the jungler is here, maybe I live, maybe I die, we get a good wave state. Their jungler yeah. shows, my ADC is happy. So that's just, like, a calculated risk at that stage. Okay. So now the same thing is happening here, right? So we fast forward, this dies, and then again, there's no need to be bot here. So we're just hovering mid, trying to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he dies. Yep. Um, we come back, and again, no reason to be bot. So we're just trying to hover around here. Jin even just died again. So you're thinking, well, screw it, might as well hover mid again. You're trying to yeah. play around with your jungler, trying to yeah. get something done. You're just fishing, essentially. That's all it is, yeah. right? You're just fishing yeah. for something to happen because you don't need to be bot. But yeah, then I'm the bot wave is... I think I th maybe our jungler was topside here. I'm not really sure. Yeah, it's but hard to My ADC see. being dead means I'm not going to look to be bot. Okay. I think this is relatively straightforward. So we'll kind of skim through the, the rest of this. And now we're trying to be bot to defend our gin. And so you're only just... Again, it's just the same thing. Trying to be here yeah. whenever it's important. If you don't need to be here, you're not going to be here. It's the same thing, rinse repeat. So yeah. I think we've got the main points from this. What we'll do, we'll move on to my VODs and we'll kind of compare. This will be interesting. Yeah. It's going to be quite embarrassing at the same time, but uh, we'll, let's dive into that. Yeah. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at um, hopefully two of my games. I tried to pick the same champions. I got a Bard game and a Rakan game. Look, we're going to talk about lane, definitely, but I also want to talk about roaming as well and how to assess the quality of rooms and how to really break down rooms because I feel like this is something that... Roaming, especially looking at your VODs, is a pivotal um, part of, of playing support. So we'll dive in. Um, give me one second here. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that we did your ones first, because I feel as though it's going to be uh, definitely going to be good to see the key differences here. Yeah. Okay. So this one was a bard game. Um, let's see if I can press tab here to see the comps. This one was a bard Wait, some mirror. Vainly yeah, or not. Yeah. So, I'm going to walk you through what I think. Um, yep. And then I could be completely wrong, but this is... We'll have a crack here. So, yep. um, to be honest with you, I actually don't think about lanes, and I should. Um, this is a very, looks like a very volatile top matchup, right? Um, volatile mid matchup. Um, in term... All I know is that I am scared of Leona. Like, Leona's a bit of a pain yeah. in the ass. Um, yep. At least in my experience. And Definitely. that's it. I don't really know the matchups. So I don't know if I do, we can do yep. or don't get Fryo. So um, what does your chance do better than Leona in lane? I mean, I have range yep. advantage, so I can like yep. poke. So like, I, I know what I am. One thing that I am thinking about is like, I want to kind of try and bait out the, um, the Zenith blade and then like poke and harass and just be annoying and like create space for my AD carry to farm. That's like kind of like my mindset. Yeah. You have range advantage, so you can force prior. You have range autos, right? If there's right. just like an, an even wave state and they can just engage on you, you're going to die because they, they have all in. So you, right. your champ's good at um, forcing like a good wave state. So you get prior, then it's harder for her to engage. Okay. So it's not good that we had to, to leash here, right? So that's all. That's the first yeah. Thing. Yeah, that's not ideal. So I ideally, know. I should be walking up according to, you know, looking at yours. I should be automatically walking up here and starting to order this wave, right? Yeah, I would I would ward and base the sweeper and try to control middle bush. Oh, because you so have level one, advantage. you would have done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
So this is already bad positioning. Yeah, they, they enter that bush too easily. So I should have just been walking up over here first and then like yeah. just starting to like... Because Leona level 1 doesn't really do anything, so... If she enters, you want her to at least eat a Q and an auto from you. Okay. <laughs> and then once she enters and she's chunked, now you're going to attack the range minions to get some prior. Once you have a good wave state, then you try and contest the bush again. Like, I'm even looking at this now. Like, my positioning comparative to the laws is just shocking. Like, I should be over here, right? Ordering it from here and then resetting the minion aggro from here, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, God damn it, man. I'm even... This is just... And then look at this. I do one auto and then I'm going to Narnia. Like, I should just be right here getting up in her face. Yeah, you'll this be able to just... get a Q auto from the bush, most likely. God damn it. So, should I be auto attacking the wave here? Um, do you want to get level two as slowly as possible, but you do want to get level two first. So you kind of right, have to, so, yeah. Uh, so that's, you, you that's should, basically the formula. At all here. You shouldn't order at all because you're already guaranteed level two, right? So you should never want to over push. It. You should never yeah. push if you don't need to push in the sense of like, if you yeah. already have the minion advantage, keep the minion advantage. You don't want to over, over Just push. Picture that Jin game. He shoved too fast. At yeah. Yeah. Game. Okay. All right. Don't be Jin. Yeah. Just the, like the this, this is good though, right? Just slow push as slow as possible. So don't even auto, just, just, stack, just walk up. Big waves. Yeah, so pressure and fog here. And yeah, this, this is good. They can't really punish you around here. This is really good by you. This is going to be the third wave that's crashing. In this matchup, you can even potentially get a fourth wave crash, which is a okay. giant wave if you really don't hit waves at all. But here I would greed to use my three stacks because they're still level one. Right, would, so you would actually just walk up more aggressively. I would, I would dance on tower radius here <laughs> to get okay. my okay. triple spell thief stack. And I know that but, the jungler is doing bot to top anyway, so I know that the jungler won't be here. Even if they are here, you guys are level two, they're level one. Okay. They're going to lose an entire quadrant. Your ADC is going to be fine. So. But the premise is good. I just should, should be walking that tightrope a little bit more aggressively, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I'm trying to do it. Yeah, that's good. You, that, so I'm baiting out abilities. That, she wouldn't have done that if you weren't like chatting in her face, right? Yeah. So yeah. Just chat as much as you are allowed to. Yeah. So with this crash, what, what should I be looking to do here? Two options. One, you dip before the crash and you go and ward Krugs or you go and ward Raptors or something. Second option, just go back. You hard chad... Q auto the vein and then portal out. <laughs> so, so is, what is this okay? Like, so my thought process is like that play is already over. Like, I look at that and I think, oh no, you never no move to the play. Yeah, never move to that play, right? No, so it's either it. reset or it's like just ward. Or is this ever an option? What I'm doing here, just kind of stacking, it's, getting my spell thieves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, the the options were water camp or Chad that vein. So just okay. go back again. So pause. So pause when the wave crashes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, pause here. So if you're, if you are, you see that little um, torch on the wall? Yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah, if you're standing mm. there, you just fucking Q order the vein's head and then you pull oh, out. Yeah. What she, yeah. What's she going to uh, do? Okay. So this is, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is the bore mentality. This is the, <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, I, they're that's in my a little bit more limit testy, but like, yeah. chunking their ADC is really big. So, so I should never queue here, right? Like, I should just hold it, shouldn't I? To prevent the all-in, or what should I do here? I mean, if you if you land it to chunk, then it's mm. good. Um, because what you, what you can do is you can... Since they're so low, you can play ping-pong here. You can chunk them, you can crash, chunk, crash. They're going to naturally lose waves on the tower, and they're going to get a bad reset. What, what will allow them to base is if you... Um, slow build and they have a lot of time but yeah this is kind of the the exception to the rule of building and crashing is when they're so right. chunked you can just perma crash right so if i if, they, if they're chunked under tower you just want to perma crash because they probably they can't do anything anyway yeah exactly right okay and they're just like that just it's like brute forcing prio and exactly yeah. they can't punish you for it anyway yeah they, they can never find a recall and right. they're just losing so ideally, though, we do it slowly. I mean, ideally, it's like yeah. at least stacking two waves. Yeah, 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 exactly. At minimum. So that's, yeah. that's good that we're not touching this, right? It's just let's let yeah. it come out. Yeah.
but this okay. is where you want to be careful of champ's identities where you don't have wave advantage and right. she looks for an all-in because technically the wave is even yeah, yeah exactly the only the only advantage we have here is the brush that's it Okay, that makes sense. So here, you just want to stay outside of Leo E range. You want to dance okay. outside her E, and right. yeah, thread okay, in the vein sense. when she wants to last hit. But you have to play around her E. Okay. <coughs> so I end up going for a ward here because I thought that Lilia did a bot this up and then it's going to be back on bot side because yeah, yeah, you can you and can then, get a ward on Krugs. That would I think, give better information. So I think I make a mistake. I use both my wards. I don't think I should use both my wards here. What do you, what do you no, think? No, you shouldn't. Yeah, so you should ward so, so Krugs okay. because you know that she's going to come out of base and look for a bot side yeah. and that'll give the best information. Um, and then I would probably ward around Dot Bush or the chicken's okay. entrance. So okay. then she's really, she can't show anywhere, right? But with mm. the vision that you put now, she can do either camp and still... Yeah, she's not seen at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that makes sense. So here, um, I just like went to get get my chimes because the way I know the way is fine. Like, I, and I know, I mean, I, I know that they can't kill Samira. Yeah, yeah. Your wave's in it's... a good state as long as they don't crash and get a good base when they're like kind of chunked. Then you're happy. So, that so I'm just fine. trying to lock them here, right? That's all I'm trying to do. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just trying to good chat. Chatting. That's what I'm trying to do. Yep. Yeah, that's good chatting. And then I'm just putting my, my W's behind. Yep. And this wave is probably going to crash. So if it's going to crash, then you want to crash it as fast as possible. Right. So there's no need to stay yet because there's no need. I mean, we're not going to stack this next wave. No. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. No way. So this is actually pretty well, bad. We should have shot that But the decision faster, you right? make in general, just commit. <clears throat> yeah. If you're yeah. going to try and stack, don't hit at all. If you're going to crash, hit as fast right. as possible. Here, the, the, you can see how the Krug ward would have given a, a lot better information, yeah, like, quicker. Yeah. But, yeah, you guys have to make a decision what you want to do with the wave. Yeah, it's this just feels spot. really this feels really awkward. Like, the way, like, it feels like we had a huge advantage and then, like, we got nothing from it. Mm -hmm. You know? So, I think we should have reset on this wave, I think. I think, right? Like, so, we, 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 we stack this... We, we shove this one hard, I think, and reset. Yeah. What do, yeah. What do you think? You hard crash reset definitely is the play here. Yeah. Because there's no, there's no point in getting like I want to get out of the lane, right? I want to get my boots, like get a pink. Yeah, and, exactly. Like, okay. Because yeah, that's jungle, actually one thing I've noticed. Your jungle also wants to part the way because he's doing crab and now he wants to do his bot side and clear it towards the top. Right. So I should be thinking as well if I am playing one of those Rome Orange champions. It's like it's like you got to be decisive on when you're gonna reset. Okay. Yeah. So all of this is like, you're not going to get this plate. You know yeah. that their jungle is going to come bot from base. And now I'm just dragging my jungler here. This is just bad. Yeah, yeah your wave's kind of awkward. You missed yeah. like a, the, the crashed uh, wave reset. And I'm not, we're not now, you know, doing that thing that we're, we're not even really brute forcing prior because they're not even that chunked anymore. Yeah, exactly. So this is just terrible. Yeah. Terrible. So, so yep. ideally here then, we either bounce, let it bounce out and then like base out of vision like this. That's what I was, I was trying yeah. to do. I was, That's pretty much your only play. It's going to be hard for you to crash. Yeah. yeah. If you guys try to crash in their jungle ganks, then you're kind of screwed. And then I, because Leona stayed, I was like, I felt like I was forced to stay here. Yeah. Um, but like you guys have had permanent control over the lane and you haven't found a reset, which is not mm -hmm. ideal. So now this is good though. We're, we're slow building. Yeah. This should be a slow build into a reset here. Yeah, if they're allowing you to slow build, crash, reset, then that's what you look to do. Okay. It's just scary okay. because of how the jungle paths started. Mm. Like, your jungle's away, their jungle probably clearing away as well, but... Yeah, but so now I should already be thinking, like, I should already be thinking here, okay, which wave is it that I'm going to reset on? Is it on yeah, this exactly. wave or is it on this wave? Yeah. Right, so it's one or yeah. the other. Yeah, that's something I don't think about enough at all. Like, I'm too focused on, like, trying to chat these guys out. I'm not thinking about... Mm resets yep. but, so i think in hindsight what i would have done is, uh, what we should have done is actually start hard shoving this one i think we should yep. start hard shoving this one and then just reset yeah so have a plan for each wave even right. before it comes so ah, that okay, wave so am i, I gonna like crash am i gonna slow am i gonna freeze and once you start now, look at this. It, it's just shit same thing here isn't it it's just yeah stuck and it's just yeah. awkward so now it's you not... have to you have to you have to order these as much as possible just just try and just crash get this in yeah 
So all of this yeah. posturing doesn't do anything. Yeah, the chunk doesn't do anything because you're going to reset anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's just giving me gold. That's about it. Yeah. Well, like, you can, you should be constantly ordering the minions, and then, like, you can still look to order Vayne if she's mm. in range, but you need to have a lot of auto attack uptime. And this is all just useless. This is very useless, yeah. This is not Bard's identity. I'm playing Bard like a lane dominant enchanter. I'm not yeah. playing Bard like a, like a Roma. You get your spell thief's quest before basing holy shit that's impressive actually <laughs> <laughs> i haven't seen that before actually <laughs> yeah so to definitely try find that that reset on a good wave state i mean yeah uh, okay so i need to take more control i should actually tell them what to do like as well right if i'm good like i should tell them to reset like reset on this like you, yeah you can even do it yourself like if you just, I'll just start resetting wave, you just just start queuing the wave and ordering it. It doesn't yeah. it doesn't matter what they do. Like you're shoving it, they kind of have to shove it as well, and then you reset, yeah. and then that communication doesn't matter too much. I like it. Yeah, yeah, this is great, man. I'm learning a lot already, and because I'm just not playing my champ, I'm not playing according to my champ's identity mm -hmm. at all. So what they should have done is remember when Lilia was bot side. Mm. Uh, it was quite a while ago, but yeah, yeah when yeah. Lilia was bot, yeah. they needed to use Lilia to fix the wave state. Um, just come, Lilia should just come through lane here, queue the wave, kill the wave, and then allow the bot lane allow to, base. to reset. Yeah, or I think they could have also reset here. Like I, the wave would be Definitely. bad. Um, like actually, it would slow because it would slow build out, but like, right? Because they have, a minion, they have two minions here. The, yeah. I mean, but it, it, but it's like better than nothing. It's like you're, you're slowly gonna, like, what do you the, think? Yeah, losing this entire cannon wave is a bit scary. Mm. They really needed their Lilia when right. she is bot to just fix the wave state. Okay, that's basically um, the only way out. What Leona could have done is find a base and then come back with boots potentially. Ah. Okay, but that Vayne, makes sense. Vayne kind of needs to try to stay in XP. So, so, so the owner could have gone for a creative reset, then like Rome, to then yeah. force me to like make a choice, and then that would have also. Leona could have reset, got full health, got boots, and sprint to bot because she's not really achieving anything bot mm, anyway. Mm. And that would have maybe opened up some opportunity for them to like win, especially if they were heavy trading. Yeah, it's the it's the concept of anything is better than nothing. Right, where okay. she's been AFK doing nothing for a long time. Okay. And if she's not and, contesting prior, then yeah. And then they end up just like giving up <laughs> and <then> resetting. <laughs> but yeah, this is still not optimal for us. Yeah. I mean, it's like we get a lead, but it's like not the right way to get a lead. So this is something that um, you can learn from their perspective is when you're in a mm. losing matchup, you need to use your jungler to bail you out. And they had that one window where their jungler is back bot side to fix their wave state. And they had to do that. So when you're in a losing lane, you're getting screwed, you're getting chunked. Um, minimize, wait for your jungle, spam ping the wave, shove it, and then reset. Yeah, that's actually a really good tip. I like that one. And then here, I mean, I'm thinking the wave's going to be bouncing out back to my AD carry, so I don't need to be there. Yep. Um, so I'm just running it straight down mid. Yep, I like it. See, I see heavy trading. I kind of mess up my ult here. I think I, I didn't know whether to ult before or like, I, I didn't know... Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit yeah. of an awkward one. It's, right. it's, yeah, being indecisive, it's, yeah. you have to commit, right? You have to commit yeah. to deciding what you want to do with waves. You have to commit to what you want to do with spells, Oops. just everything. Yeah. <laughs> just commit. That's no, the best way to learn. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, let's get specific. Warding, right? I have no idea what the hell I'm doing here. So I come out, wards. Where would you ward here in this situation? Where would you go specifically? Um, I would drop a ward in mid lane, actually, because they have a LeBlanc and she... If she leans to either side, it's quite threatening, like her roams. Okay. So I would drop one ward in mid. Just rule of thumb, warding mid lane is almost always really effective. Mm. Unless they just have an AFK victor or something. Okay, so one ward mid, mm -hmm. and yep. then would you ward there or not? Nah, that's going to get Useless. cleared. So would you ward up yeah, here? That, that's, so what I would do is, you know the banana bush? Um, just, this, one, this one here? Yeah, yeah, on yeah. On the, exactly. their side? No, no, no. no. Our, our, our side. Okay. Yeah, so I, I would... Because they're getting mid-shove here, and they're going to be crashing a bot. They're going to be building a bot wave, right? Mm. So mm. we need some defensive vision around the river. Mm. Otherwise, we could just get, like, four-manned, or 
the river's going to be dark for a long time, right? Because bad, bad mid wave, bad bot wave. Right. So, so the so the wards are relative to the wave states and and prio, essentially. Yeah. I mean, if we're shoving, if we're the ones shoving this mid wave, I'm going to be asking you to get deep wards. Like over here. So if we had the yeah. LeBlanc, we would be shoving, we're warding here. But since yeah. they have prior, I should be warding here. Yeah, yeah. Because because they, they could theoretically sweep the one in the dot brush, whereas yeah, they're, they're, le they're less likely to, sh yeah. to sweep that one. I'm, I'm trying to find vision and river that's going to not get swept. Okay, that makes sense. So now I'm thinking here, I remember thinking... Um, that the wave is still fine bot and then I, I thought i could like hold the wave for the fizz that's what i was thinking here i mean it's a good thought process i just don't see how you're gonna hold the wave there leona look at this next level okay yep no that's that's really good <laughs> they they should prevent this so they, the mindset's they're... good though right like yeah, this is waves yeah their mid sub should ensure the crash and um yeah look to back off so okay. leona's job like support's time is less valuable than mid and ADC's mm. time. So Leona should have postured to engage on you. And if she's in range, she engages on you, LeBlanc follows up. But pretty much Leona prevents crash, LeBlanc finds a base. Mm. Yeah, so Leona should have walked this one up. Because I just saw Le Leona yeah, yeah, run definitely. away and use the Zenith Blade on the way. So I'm thinking, oh, well, yeah. I can just do whatever I want. Because I know LeBlanc was also kind of like running low on yeah. resources. Yeah. So I'm like, and, and I, I knew I was like pretty tanky. So I was like, ah, oh, screw it. Yeah, no, this um, this is good, definitely. Okay, so then I remember thinking here, um, Leona didn't have Trinket yet, so I remember thinking as well, like, I can kind of, like, chat around Vision. And then oh, my yeah, bot lane just died. Leo. Oh, you would have um, just chunked Leo here as well. Oh, well, yeah, she... You, yeah. you know this is a free chunk. You, you I, I just didn't know where Lilia was, but yeah, I think that, yeah. I mean, you have you have the E right here. If True, you, this is just being a bitch, yeah. You, yeah. you know their mid laner just based. So, so AD carry dies here, right? Yep. I mean, that's out of my control. There's nothing I can do there. So I remember thinking there's nothing I could do bot. So then I, I just like get chimes and I just like get a ward out over the the, the, the dragon yep. here. And, and yeah, then I, I just that. like hover because there's nothing for me to do bot here. Is this exactly. what you would do? Yeah, no, this is perfect. There's this, you're in fog. They don't know where you are and you're leaning towards this lane. Yeah, this, and then this I see Kha'Zix's top side. So, so, and he, he pings all the way to, on the rift. So one so, thing I didn't do though is I didn't assess this wave. This wave's actually bad. Look at it. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Um, it looks it's like actually, it's slow pushing out, right? Yeah, look at that. Yeah. I, I think it crashes though. I think it actually yeah it crashes. So I think I'm all good. But that could have easily been bad, right? Leona could have theoretically, or someone they might have been able to get back in time and like hold that. Yeah. And then this guy, then I would have frozen. to go all the way bot. Yeah, yeah. If that wave is frozen, then you have to try and break it. Okay. But otherwise, your movement is good. Just something to keep in mind. You should try to just go back again. You should try to deny enemy information. So just wait until Fizz clears the minions, and then you move. Because if they see okay. you crossing mid like this, they, they mm. see you, right? It's too obvious. But, yeah, if you go around or if you wait for him to kill the minions, they never know if you're bot or top. Yeah, so that's now they know big. Bard is top, and they just, yeah, they don't have to know that. Again, it's all vision, waves. It's the same thing. Yep. But yeah, my premise here, I remember thinking, well, there's nothing for me to do bot again, so I'm just hovering. I mean, mm -hmm. and I couldn't tell if I'm trolling here or not, like just being here for so long, but I just genuinely thought that the wave was bouncing out bot. I remember thinking the wave was bouncing out bot. There's no need for me to be bot. So then I kind of secure this, and then I think I, I go back bot here because I didn't want my Samira to be zoned. Yep. Oh, this is perfect, actually. Good decision right? making. So as soon as your team has... The Herald, like, you know that they're not contesting anymore. You go back yep. bot. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah to, to be honest, I don't even know we win. <laughs> I mean, this is just, I'm just limit testing, to be honest with you. And then I fuck yeah. up here. I, 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 this is not good. So, engaging on the sup. Like, there, she's always going to be able to get all of her spells off. And if you guys are focusing sup and Vayne is just free-hitting your ADC, it's gonna turn yeah. sour right okay so this is yeah this is just over overzealous this yeah. is too much chaos and then i and, and i remember thinking here like he's dead and i thought he was just gonna disengage um but then i already disengaged. <laughs> so yeah. a little bit bad I mean, situation awareness yeah but a, a, a weird champ you're gonna 
like it just takes time yeah yeah exactly but <laughs> I, I, but I'm, I'm more focused on the learnings in terms of the ways so i'm actually pretty happy in hindsight then with, with what you've what we've covered it's yeah. actually not as bad as i thought no you played around waves really well uh just the the first base like the first extended laning yeah, phase. first extended lane, yeah 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 so remember here i, I wanted to hold the way but i can't it's just too, no, you, too big. you interrupt her base here for sure because ah. you, you know she's basing right so I was thinking here I just should reset instead and just get tempo like get back and get back on the map because I have yeah, virtual wards. Yeah, the the fundamental is that everyone else matters more than support. So screw over their ADC. You're you're just right. you're yeah. Cancel okay, her base sense. and then she's kind of fucked. Okay. It's the same with you holding that mid wave because you play mid so much you know it's important, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, and, but this is just not good, though, because now I've overstayed. I didn't stop the reset, and I haven't reset myself. This is not good. This is overstay, right? Um, yeah, just go go back a little bit more. Um, so, so, like, here yeah, I'm thinking... Um, yeah, so if you don't cancel the reset... Um, I mean, your Jax is in an interesting spot. So... Right, so it's kind of, like, situational here. It's like, it's like a... Yeah. It's a very niche scenario where, like, yeah, can... like how often is your Jax going to be fog and their Krugs randomly bought? So, if he right. wants to look for a pick here, then you look for a pick with him. Yeah. But if nine times out of ten your top laner isn't at their Krugs, then you just find a base. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. All right. So fast forwarding, it looks like that wave's a bit awkward. I mean, Samira should have slow built here, right? Yeah. It looks like. She can but, slow build and crash. But so she, she probably didn't. should do that. But so then I have to adapt, right? So the fact that she didn't and she's hard chopping, I should go back straight bot here? Yeah. If if you think she can't crash her by herself, then you should hover her. Okay. All right. Because I see Leona mid, so yeah, it looks like she can't maybe. I don't know what's going on there. She, but... she, 1v1, she definitely should be able to crash mm. the wave. She has so it's a lot of wave. just feeling out. It's a lot of feeling it out, isn't it? It's yeah. just like, do, do I think they need me or not? Yeah. As long as you have the fun fundamentals about thinking about the waves, then you can eventually develop some instincts and feeling mm. out situations about it. And what I always say to my mid clients, like, just have a high, just have a theory about it. Like, even if you're yep. wrong, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like, you'll yeah, see it in commit hindsight. Commit to a theory and then test it. <laughs> yeah, test it. It's like I have a hypothesis. You're like a little scientist, tinker away, and then. <clears throat> yep. Just a little micro thing. Mm. Um, you want to queue first because. You're always going to be able to order her, right? But if yeah. she knows, if you order her, she, oh, a bard's here, then she queues your queue, then mm. less damage. And now I'm just seeing a little play. I'm just, and like, I'm trying to just do what you do. Yep. I'm just trying to hover out of vision and just get to plays. Yeah, no, this is good. You, you're playing around your bot wave states well, and then you're you're fogging quite a lot, which is which is optimal. But now ways are pretty awkward here, and I, I, again, I'm worried about Leona like maybe being here and killing Samira. So I just. So what should I do here? Where should I be? Yeah. So their jungler's dead. Your jungler's mm. here. Mm. You have an option to freeze. So you should just fog around um, Bot River with your jungler. So I should should I should be on here fogging, not here. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And that gives me full of more flexibility, doesn't it? Because then I can commit up and I can be here. I can kind of do both. Yeah. Yeah. So like you by being here, the... yeah, my options are limited. You, you can move mid, you can do dragon. Right. You can do anything. But here it's like you're bot. You know? mm, I'm committed. Yeah. It's yeah. not good. Oh, that makes sense. So the premise is kind of right, but it's just not at the same time. It's like, I mean, I'm still trying to be no, around yeah, my AD carry. But it's yeah. just missing. It's just like my location is not good. Yeah, it's just a little bit more effective fog. Right. Yeah. Like here, even if you're in fog, and then they contest those melees, you can like portal your jungle in and potentially kill them. Yeah. So this is good. You're linking up with your jungler here. I like that. I'll give him an E out. This was trying. I get an exhaust. I so, didn't know Samira yeah. was going to jump that way. I thought Samira was needed to get out, so that's why I like portaled that way. Yeah. So just drop an E right now after you've altered the Kha'Zix. Right. Yeah, I should have. Yeah. But otherwise, I really like that disengage ult. ADC over commits. What can you do? Jungle over commits. What can you do? <laughs> 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 I mean, I missed the Q or two, but yeah. I mean, I mean, it yeah. didn't get the stun, but yeah. 
That makes yeah. sense. But yeah, my main issue was my positioning in the lane there. Mm -hmm. Wasn't good. All right. So I remember thinking here, again, nothing, there's nothing for me to do bot. Um, yep. So I'm just going top here. And I see Fizz is... And I remember pressing yeah. tab and thinking about win cons. I remember thinking Fizz for some somehow, some way, was fed. And Jax was doing really well. So I'll, I remember thinking to myself right now, all right, Samira's done. Um, or like, I mean, unless you're not done, but like my priority is probably playing around Fizz and Jax. That's what I thought anyway. Yeah. No, this is good pathing. You should path exactly where you are. You don't run top. You don't run mid. You path in the middle. And then you can adapt to whatever's happening. So I'm just trying to get um, D-Vision on top side, I think. Is this just... So I, don't, I don't know where the hell I'm into ward here. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna... Right idea. Um, where should I you... ward here? <laughs> so... I personally really like pinks on middle bushes instead of dots. Like between okay. the, the lane and the river. Why is that? It's so that your, your mid laner can lean towards either side in fog. And so that you okay. can camp next to a lane in fog and potentially look to turn or something. Okay. Would you and get these deep wards? I would get deeper. So that, that ward there is not as okay. the best vision. You can get so it in like, like deeper there? In the, yeah, deeper in the intersection. There? Uh, maybe you, you know, like deep, where the, the big jungle intersection between just here. blue and gromp and wolves and the yeah. entrance. Oh, that, just over here, kind of. A little bit deeper. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So just you want to catch Lilia entering that side of the jungle. Yeah. So yeah, here yeah. you're only getting vision of blue, but you want to see her entering. It's the same right. idea about like warding Krug, so you see her entering. So the, the goal being to spot out their pathing, essentially. That's like yeah. the goal. Yeah. Um, and then I know that Leona was here, and now again I'm trying to hover out of vision, just trying to make sure I'm between the, way, just between the lanes. And then I saw that she was kind of overextended, so I just commit. Yeah. And then I, will, I think I ult the tower just so I can dive. Here. Yeah, I, I can feel your, like, you want to find a good ult. You're not confident in landing it on her. You decide nah. just to ult. But so we like, get to get the dive. That's what I thought yeah. anyway. Because yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I didn't I think it was feasible for me to ult Vayne. No, you don't, you don't need an ult here. And if she starts to camp under tower and you feel like you need an ult, then you ult. Yeah, yeah. I, I like, could have just tanked that anyway. You just walk at her, Q her, and then yeah. E out. But again, that's, this is the power of fogging, right? It's like, well, I'm in between the lanes. Like, like if I can go bot, if there's a play, there's a play. If not, that's fine. Yeah. I can just stay bot mid, right? So yeah, exactly. That's the power of it. It's, it's like I'm, I'm maximizing my, out, my uh, what, what's the word you use? Uptime. Uptime, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I don't need to be there, so I just instantly go back mid mm -hmm. and just get vision and stuff. Try to get a deep ward. Yep. Something that could help is just thinking about typical pink spots so you know that ward you dropped at chickens mm, mm. you should ward uh, just go back it's going to be hard to explain it yes yeah, so, so you should know that people are going to sweep that bush or pink that mm, bush mm. so you should ward outside of that pink's range so you either ward like where your champion is mm -hmm, so you can mm -hmm. see the camp and dodge the pink mm. or you know how there's like a little bit of curvature to the wall next to that bush um, south, so, so down here. See, see the bush, this and one? then go yeah, go straight down. Like yeah, there. so yeah, yeah. So you want to ward around there. That'll also dodge the pink and mm. see them moving. So it's just like thinking about mm. vision. A little right. Little. So it's thinking about how can I maximize my vision without it getting spotted. Essentially. Exactly. Yeah. 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 God damn! How many times have you spotted me? Um, <laughs> yeah, what that's are you, the what thing. Are you... Like, you, you can't. You can't tell when vision goes bad as you can when lane goes bad, right? You take yeah. a bad trade in lane, it's fucked. You you do bad vision control, you you don't know it, <laughs> right? You don't yeah. know if they see you. You don't know if you're missing out on seeing them. Yeah. And I remember thinking here, um, just heading into mid game, I'm thinking, okay, bot tower's dead. Um, and now I'm thinking just hovering my jungler here. Like he's on rift, yep. so I just want to hover. So I'm just trying to like make sure that Trying to get some vision. I mean, LeBlanc kind of dicks around. Yeah. Um, so this is yeah. fine. Yeah, that's fine. I I don't know how in depth you want me to go with like the the vision and the sweeping and stuff. Yeah, I do. I, I think it's worth talking about here. Yeah, because we didn't so, really talk about this on yours. So you'll notice that <clears throat> you sweep, but their pinks are still up, and then your sweep entirely goes to waste. Ah. Yeah. 
I shouldn't sweep at all here. Yeah, their their jungle support hasn't been up here. There's been a lot of activity around mid and around shallow bot, I believe. Um, so you, you want to check some bushes to see if they're pinked. And then once they're not pinked, then you activate your sweeper. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, because yeah. I'm not, because I want to clear these first, otherwise I'm yep. just wasting time on my sweeper. Yeah. Yeah, or they know exactly where you are. They can yeah. kill you. Yeah, I, I, I have noticed that I tend to autopilot my sweeper a lot. Mm. Like, I just kind of press it. And then yep. I'm like, well, I got nothing from that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, right idea, and then just a little more of yeah. the execution. Like, you want to control yeah. their. How am I going to control it? Yeah, yeah. But again, same thing. I'm just trying to hover just in case and then hovering my jungler. So this is one of the main things that um, my clients need to learn is like warding mid lane, especially when the map opens up. Mm. Like, so once back you, here. Yeah, once you heralded mid, you get a deep mm. mid lane ward and that's like the most important information in the game. Wow. Because so like ideally like down, we're talking like down here or up here? Yeah. No, no, down. Down here. So you know, I'm sure you like you know, and you teach your clients how important like the middle of the map is. Like you can mm -hmm. control either side, mm -hmm. and if you see what they do in the middle of the map, you know everything about the map. You know if they're gonna catch mid, go top, or catch mid, go bot, or contest the next mid. Everything is centered around the middle of the map. So yeah, getting awards on there at all times is very important. Great, I like it. And so now this is relatively straightforward. My fizz is in the side lane. I'm just hovering my fizz yep. here. Yep. He's Their just out of control. Overextended. Yep. This is I actually him. wonder if you get an assist there or not. I actually nah, don't know. Fizz solo killed it. So Kha'Zix didn't I think I do though. If, if Kha'Zix hits it, I think I do. Maybe. I'm yeah. I'm pretty sure I do. I should know that, but... No. Oh, what? Okay, what does this mean? I, what is the red... What does the red chime mean? It's going to expire very soon. Ah, okay. I've always so, wondered for, <laughs> for someone who's played Bard for so long, I don't actually know all of the the chime, like, the break, details. like, the numbers, like, which, um, which numbers are really important to hit. And I don't right. often, like, go on big missions to find it. I just play around <laughs> waves. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, it's like, if, I, if they're in the area, I'll get them. If not... Yeah, exactly. Not a big deal. Okay. I never decide to grief tempo or waves to get chimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we'll take a look at my Rakan game. Yep. Um, and then we'll uh, take a look at this one. So this look, again, be warned, I'm not the best Rakan. So, um, we'll take a look. So we've got a Rakan vein. Yep. Very weak 2v2. I mean, I, at least what I assume. Um yeah, so let's just take a look. Yeah, extremely weak 2v2. Yeah. I wouldn't contest mid-bush, which you don't. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so this is going to be probably about losing gracefully. Okay. And I'd love and, to learn how to do that. Yeah. I mean, since you start in lane and they don't, you have an option to limit test and try and force level 2. Um, by ordering so, the wave a lot. So I should order more than I am? You you want to make a decision and commit to it. So mm, if you go okay. back to the start of the lane, yeah, you know they're not starting you are. So you just spam hit here, your vein spam hits. You can potentially force level two. Uh, so it's one or the other way. They're going to accept reality yeah. that we don't want to contest and I don't hit it at all or yeah. they we, we hardcore commit. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Is, is there such a thing, by the way, Andy, where you commit it's like it's worse if you commit and lose rather than fully giving um nothing like, comes so, to mind nothing because i what i've I, what i've found sometimes is that like i try to commit for level two but then they get it first and then like they get to stack a bigger wave or something is that is that is that a thing or not um like i i, I don't know if it's just my feeling or my intuition or right not. well if you okay obviously if you commit and fail at something it's going to be bad but right. that's how you learn okay um so don't, oh yeah don't worry it seemed a bit too theoretical don't worry yeah, about yeah. that all right so i think we i remember thinking here we might be able to contest for level two I, to be honest, I don't even know what the hell i'm doing here like i don't know my mind is like i'm just very like free flow i just want to hit a cue <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, you can't. This position 
and it's hard yeah. to be hit a cue because they're in the minions. So I'm feeling really useless and I'm slowly getting chunked out. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, and I wore the middle of the brush to like maybe create a bit of space, but then I'm thinking, well, holy moly. Yeah. Um, so this is just, so this is not good minimizing. We've taken way too much damage, yeah. right? Like you shouldn't even have contested. I mean, you even told me that you expect to lose 2v2. So in any of these freeze frames, you should recognize that you're going to lose 2v2. And, and I just shouldn't be walking out. Two. Yep. You just lose gracefully, sit back, let the okay. wave come into you. Because I think I've gotten a bad habit with support where like I'm barred all the time on every champion and then I get myself into really, like I try to chat people out with cues and like mechanics max and I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I just get myself into terrible situations. Yeah. I would um, honestly start E just to all right. keep your vein healthier. Yeah, with a shield. Yeah. Okay. But it, there's nothing we can do here again. I'm just trying to sit yeah. in XP range. Yeah. And they're doing a really good job of slow building here, right? So... Yeah, the the wave is always going to be like this, but you guys can be a lot healthier. Right, so we're just suffering the consequences of a bad level one. Yeah, and not accepting reality. After yeah. that bad level one, you guys needed to let the wave come in and stay healthy. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> it's not looking good. So, that, so off this big wave, they should either, like, they could roam, they could invade, they could secure a scuttle, they could bait. Yep. There's so many things they could do here, Yeah. Right? So they're going to contest, they're going to get Scuttle, they're going to potentially contest your jungle. Yeah, they're looking like they're invading on the blue here. And they can do that because of this gigantic wave. Yeah. So this is really good by them, actually. Okay. That's a big W. But look at bot wave. Yeah, we're getting, we're losing so much Your ADC is losing an insane amount of minions. <laughs> so what... Like this, this fight is a flip at the end of the day. <laughs> it's a flip, right? Yeah, it's a hundred. I like. I remember thinking here, yeah, like, okay, I remember thinking <laughs> if my Echo loses blue and we're, like we're gonna lose bot, like the game, and because Top's already been solo killed or something, I remember thinking <laughs> like, I'm not giving this, you know, that's yeah, like my no. mindset. Yeah. And I knew that I really had TP. Um, and like I feel like this is a mistake from Bard though as well, right? Like Bard shouldn't. Bard definitely shouldn't eat like that. That's their, their play weird. is to get the blue and then get the scuttle. Yeah. So we so go in, like yeah. we get kind of lucky here that Echo survives and then I survive and then... And then they get a th three man stunned by Aurelia and then she gets a clean up. But you can see it's a flip, right? <laughs> it's a flip, uh, yeah. I just wanted to see your reaction. With that <laughs> yeah. It's very solo Q-esque. And your, your vein is fucked either way. Oh yeah, my vein is done. I remember the, we, <laughs> we end up losing because the vein was just so done. Like, yeah. yeah. Like this game, what I love this game though, and the reason I chose this game is because it's all about roams. Like I thought this game was unlosable, from like because we we were so we get Aurelia so far ahead, but the, uh, Vayne is so far behind yeah. that it we can't. Like I remember thinking here, like we're so done. Yeah, you're losing this game to wave states, which is the number one priority. It's the number one priority. Yeah, it doesn't matter so, if you get those kills, your Vayne's fucked. So I remember thinking, oh, we really got to get this wave out. Like <coughs> yeah, you definitely do. And then, and look what Sybil does. Sybil, Sybil recognizes that we're trying to like get the wave out mm -hmm. and then prevents us from getting the wave out here, I think. If I remember correctly. Yeah. I think this is so bad really, for us, right? Well, I think it's really bad for Jungle to do that because mm. what he's done is he's told your entire team where he is and mm. now he's really chunked. Mm. So he's traded his tempo and his health for a good bot wave state and he didn't get a kill echo can sprint to his top side yeah. it's you don't you're not going to see jungles grief their tempo and health mm. like that at high level and um, then but they mess up the freeze i mean if Elios yeah. if freezes though and i'm pretty sure he messes up the freeze like we get lucky but in a perfect world if Elios freezes here right for them yeah especially and then since veins yeah, done if if their jungle does that, they have to pull off that freeze. And then and then what would your mindset be as Rakan here? It's like if they freeze there, it's like, well, is it just accept reality and like let Vayne go down two levels and like roam? Is it or is it like call for jungle and like help get the wave out or what would it's, you do? It's try to try to fix that wave. It's the number okay. one priority. Okay. And so I think we get lucky. That, yeah, I don't know why he's breaking the freeze. Yeah. So I remember thinking here, he messed up the freeze, so I can just roam. So I'm just like hovering. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is definitely your best play. 
Stay in fog. Perfect. Yeah, I'm just trying. And then um, I see Echo move into top side. So I remember. Yeah. I think I, I think here I'm, I I loop around because I know that bo- the, the wave bot is um, building yep. out. So so just go back here. <clears throat> you should force mid prior with your mid laner and okay. meet up with your jungler. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah. he wants uh, to. This is no, I'm doing nothing here. Uh, there's yeah, no exactly. point being here. It's like it's the right kind of thought, like deny information, but at the end of the day, like. Your, your jungler wants to do something and you can help mm. him. Doesn't yeah. matter if you show mid here or not because your bot wave is fine. Yeah, and I remember thinking the Echo's just out of control, right? Like, mm. and I remember my mindset with this entire game was, okay, like, let's just try and get as much farm for Vayne as possible, like minimize, but he's not the wincon, she's not the wincon. Like, let's just play around this Echo and this Aurelia. Um, yeah. But I had to go bot here because I just wanted to, like, ensure that my Vayne could get all the, all the wave. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is fine, right? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I would have helped shove mid and then come bot. Okay. But this is so also th- okay. Yep, so then we catch this as much as we can under tower. They're just like absolutely destroying us. Um, they end up... I remember thinking here they reset, so I'm, I'm thinking just try and shove, 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 get the wave out, but he, he's not hitting the wave, so I'm thinking, okay, maybe he wants a slow stack. Yeah. So I was really confused here. I, I thought we should just hard shove this. Yeah, it's... You guys can't shove fast, but if you commit, maybe you can. Yeah. It's another situation where it's like... Well, it's one or the other. It's one or the other. Yeah, so you're much. either stacking or you're, you're, or you're hard shoving. Mm-hmm. All right, so Bards end up roaming, and then I remember I felt pressured because I'm thinking... Yeah, I, 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 this is where I'm confused. Priority number one, fix the wave, wave state. You, what's the plan with this next wave? It's crash it, right? Okay, so I should just, just I should just crash screw wave. bard, ping back yeah. mid, danger, and then just get the yeah. wave in, then yeah. roam, right? Priority number one is always wave state. Okay, yeah, and this this vod really highlights my like indecisiveness with waves. Like I am, mm-hmm. I'm I'm I've lost like I'm all over the place mentally with waves. Like I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. All right, that makes sense. So yeah, this is a, this is a terrible roam. Yeah. Make sure your wave is good, then do whatever you want. So I end up moving mid here. Ends up kind of working. Like we end up getting a kill. Yeah. But again, it's this like, is kind of flippy. It's kind of flippy, right? It's, it's a bit flip, but the the biggest thing is like we haven't ensured that bot is fine. Like they, I don't know why they're not ever threatening freezing bot when yeah. they can. Yeah, I don't know either. To be but we're giving them that option, right? And then it crashes, so I'm thinking, all right, I don't need to be bot again, so I just run top side. Yep. yep, perfect. And it's good that you pass top side of mid rather than bot side because your jungle is around here. So what you want to be doing, just go back. Yeah, let's go back here. Yeah. So, so you want to switch think, bad as well. So your movement here, just pause. Like you, your movement here is like, I want to ensure they don't contest Herald. Yep. And this is where you're going to have to find that line of where they're giving Herald and you can be bot as quickly as possible. Right. Okay. Just, okay. I'm sure you can tell there's no use in you AFK standing on Herald, right? There's yeah, no there's no need. I mean, use. if they get, yeah. I should only be here if they're going to contest. Yeah, and you have to kind of get a feel of if they're contesting or not. Right. And how yeah. much you can push your macro limits and being bot. Right, that makes sense. Yeah. So, so, so <laughs> here, um, I can like hover, but as soon as I know they're not going to contest, I just beeline straight yeah. back bot. Fog and here. I remember. Th- yep. Sorry, go on. Yeah, you fog here and then you posture to sprint towards bot as soon as possible. I remember pinging danger bot because I know that they're not contesting. Then I and I thought he, she was going to die to bot or something, so I end up pinging danger like bot. Mm-hmm. So then I moved back straight back bot to yep, catch the wave under tower. Yep. And I catch it. So this is all alright, right? I mean, given it yeah, just it just felt good. bad, but it's like it's just that's just the reality of the game. Wait, what, what felt bad? Like, it the, just felt bad that, like, I, I come, like, bots just, we can't do jack shit in the 2v2. Like, we're just so right. useless. Yeah. I mean, your your team got the, the Herald top, and you're yeah. going to collect a big wave. You can't win three lanes at once all the time. Yeah. So, but yeah, this is fine. Yeah, I'm just trying to, like, create space here. That's, like, all I'm trying to do, I guess. Yeah. If we didn't have information of their jungle, and you use cooldowns like that, it makes their dive a lot easier just something okay. to keep in mind just right, that yeah, general that fundamental of increasing volatility when you're strong side and decreasing right. when you're weak so I you want to that. keep cooldowns and you want to keep healthy 
when you're weak side so that they can't just dive you. That's a beautiful, I love that. It's a beautiful learning. So it's like, if I know that my jungler's top side, I need to be on defense. Like I shouldn't be tra- looking to trade. I shouldn't Definitely be maintaining not. HP. Yeah. yeah. But so, it, since Tali was top, we just get away with it. Like, yeah, yeah. If you, and I you, wasn't thinking about that at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Okay, so look, we just kind of chill, and then I remember thinking, okay, then I, Bard moves, so I'm thinking, all right, I don't need to be here anymore, so I just yep. instant move. Yep, perfect. And I remember thinking, again, I need to be here as soon as I possibly can. Are you looking at to... your... <laughs> yeah, I, did, I didn't know I was looking okay. next. <laughs> and, I, and I remember thinking, oh shit, what do I do? And you'll see, I kind of panic here. This <laughs> is where camera control for both of us is helpful, because I look yeah. too much at my character in just a minimap, and you probably look too much away from your character or whatever, yeah. but yeah, just hot keying um, each yeah. solo lane is <laughs> is good. Um, and then I panic. I was I was just trying to save the echo, but it did nothing, and then I ended up wasting my alt and my flash, which is mm. absolutely terrible. Yeah, the accepting reality and the um, yeah, just ac- accepting reality. Like you can't save them there, yeah. and if if you're gonna commit to fighting. Maybe you would have done it earlier. I don't know. But. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we get the wave in though. And then this is where the game starts to get spicy. So again, I'm thinking, okay, bot wave is cu- he, he's okay for now. Like, yeah. and then I just want to kind of hover out of vision here. get a bit of vision with my jungler. And then we um, end up going straight for the, the um, Talia. This is fine. Yeah. yeah, that's good. And is that the same really, ward again? That I shouldn't really go for that ward. game, by the way, with the Echo and the Irelia. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think that's why I picked Rakan because Bard was. Yeah. I think they picked Bard, and and I <laughs> yep. I, I want to play Bard, but then I think well, it's actually good into Kiana, and it's good with Echo and Aurelia. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, um, it's really good with a like assassin kind of meta. Yeah, so then I just kind of hover again. Um, now I go back bot here because I just thought there was nothing to do top so mid. Like, what should I do here? Um, you should just fog probably. Right. You, you're like, right, there's not much here. to achieve. <clears throat> you fog bot, and you know that mid is really volatile, right? So then you fog between mid and bot, and you're probably leaning towards mid. Bot wave is fine. Mm. Mid is Irelia vs. Kiana. So the intention, and, though, is to basically wait until something does happen, and like just, just wait for my cooldowns. Like It's never to kill yeah. this guy. It's always just to just be out of vision and just kind of react to what's happening mid-jungle, right? Yeah, like you know mid is volatile, so you want to yeah. be closer to that lane, because there's more likely something to happen there. So I'm warning you, this is where the ga- I lose the game for my team, I think. Okay, right okay. <laughs> this, is, this is where it all goes to shit. So I, 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 now, I remember I felt really like conf- like lost in terms of like what my intention was. Like, w- what am I here to do, you know? Like, I didn't know what I was, yep. like where I should be directing my attention. And then, um, and then I okay. kind of like, so like I go in and I'm not thinking, yep. oh, I should be on weak side because Echo's top. And now that's the key fundamental here. Mm-hmm. That's what should be happening, right? So the, the signs are Echo's pathing top side. We don't, I mean, Vayne's not the win con. We don't win into a failure. I said he has red, white here. Yeah. Um, and but- I should just be minimizing, fogging, and then waiting to play mid jungle. Yeah. I can see that you don't really have a plan. No, I'm lost. Around I'm in, this, I'm in, because I'm in fairy land. If you if you take a second to think about like what you can do, you can't one shot the Aphelios. Um You still lose two v two. You're not going to be able to contest prior and crash. So, really, there's not much for you to there's do nothing. around here. Yeah. Just wait. If you, yeah, this this is like the autopiloting. I'm just going to hit what's in front of me and see what happens. Exactly, I'm autopiloting. <laughs> I'm in I'm in Fairyland, man. I have no yeah. idea what I'm doing here. And then this is what really, and then they kill Vane here. And this is where Felios just gets like one v nine level fed. Um, yeah, yeah. And then and I give them a wink on right. Like we don't need to fight there. We could have just minimized, survived, even give the tower if need be, or just ch- chill. And then um, yeah. And then I'm thinking, okay. We're really, really, really screwed bot. Vane's catching the wave, and this is a kind of the nail in the coffin, I think. Here, is it? No. Yeah. So I'm, and but, I'm just trying to get all of from that. Mid. All of that just ties into the minimizing volatility on weak exactly. side. Like, your jungler was pathing away from you. Um, yeah, just giving them a hard 
task to punish you is the idea yeah. there because they they want to induce volatility they they should look for these psycho trades that you are looking for yeah um, but yeah. so and now the game kind of gets chaotic and i remember thinking all right bot wave or vein's basing the waves bouncing back out to vein i try to look for a mid dive here because i knew tali was top Keanu buys a lot of time and then and then this is where the game explodes again um mm. yeah but this is you know this is just all niche scenarios like, you know this is not yeah because I just felt desperate and I think the main learning though is like the more fundamentally like I wasn't there were many times in this lane where I wasn't thinking about waves yeah. I wasn't I wasn't valuing and it's all actually all stems from me not giving the blue. I should have given the blue. I should have pinged back, give blue, and we get the bot wave, right? Yeah. That's what all stems from. Test, like, you just maybe get a cheeky smite and get out. Like, that's all you can do, really. Mm. Um, yeah. So, like, the biggest thing is Vayne should stay on bot. You can... You, you're free to, like, kind of poke your head around. But you don't, like, hard commit and everyone die. But, yeah, yeah you, you, you see if you can secure his blue. Vayne has to collect bot wave. Okay. It stems back to level one. You not recognizing that you have an opportunity to actually shove. So early lane. So early lane assessment, essentially, <clears throat> like whether we're going to contest or not. Yeah. Well, like you, you load in, you lose two v two. That's what you say, right? Yeah. And then you like, if that's the case, you generally want to leash and let your jungler par the way. Yep. So that he can pass to a winning lane, so he can get scuttle. Yep. But. Since you guys started in lane, then you your jungler needs you guys to have prior. Or what's he going to do? He's going to lose scuttle. He's going to lose his blue. He's going to lose everything. So assess level one. I mean, like when you're loading in, what should yep. happen? And then you load into a game. You're in lane. Oh, we don't have. We're not leashing. They are leashing. Shove. Get pressure the map. You know, put your foot on their throat as soon as yep. possible. So that's where it all started. And then the second yep. thing was, yeah, the poor lack of, I guess, care for wave and their XP early. Mm -hmm. That was like the level two or three. And then the third one, I, I, I'm not assess assessing weak side, strong side in the sense of like, um, yeah, reduce, you call volatility, it? You put it? On, yeah, reduce, reduce volatility on weak side. Yeah. And another thing that was a bit recurring in this game is having a plan for the next wave. Yeah, you're right. Next plan. I was very lost. So yeah, mm. next plan. Next so, wave. Plan. We, just just ask yourself. Like you, you have 45 seconds between waves, crashing to like just ask yourself. What what am I gonna do? Mm. Am I gonna crash this? Am I gonna slow build it? Am I gonna freeze it? Mm. Decide. That's great. Decide. Commit, and then you'll you'll know if it was if it felt good or bad, and then you'll continually improve on that. But just have a plan for each wave. I really like that. That's great. So, um, so we'll, we'll move on. Um, I mean, that was amazing stuff, man. That's really, really, really helpful. And I'm sure that's going to help a lot of people. Um, so moving on though, to round this video out, we're going to talk about some of the top errors you notice with your clients. Yeah. So, um, yeah. these are things that you've seen coaching. Um, yep. first one here, you want to step through these ones, man? I'll just kind of, yeah. Um, on. uh, whenever people were like, especially off rollers, but people just, autopilot straight to bot from base they base they run bot they tell them si themselves i'm a bot laner i have to be bot but like you can see from what we went over today that that's really not the case it doesn't no. have to be the case so just have a think this ties into to waves actually do you it's need to waves, be bot? Right? yeah do you need to be bot an answer of a lot of the time is no if you don't need to be bot don't be bot you know mm, I so like it's it. pretty simple So yeah, what I mean, if 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 you're if you don't need to be bot, just path mid instead, or like do that fog warrior pressure between lanes instead of just being bot. Yeah, spot on. Yep. Second one here. What do we have? Yeah. Here? So if we remember that Pike game that the enemy was playing and I was Lulu, he was wasting cooldowns nonstop, and that bought us a lot of space to pressure the lane when I shouldn't have. So don't throw out your cooldowns nonstop and waste them. Yeah, that Pike um, example is actually perfect. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a time and place and yeah you you also you don't want to waste your cooldowns you also want to punish the enemy wasting cooldowns if a pike uses q if a thresh or a blitz wastes q that's like 15 seconds that they're not a champion so fucking do something about it you know mm -hmm. like shove pressure exit as much as you can and then once their cooldown comes back up then you start to back off 
So it's yeah, it's both like about that. finding the right time to use your cooldowns and punishing them wasting cooldowns. That, that's one thing that I found. So I, I used to dabble with a little bit of Thresh. I found that I struggled a lot. Like I would feel pressured to use my Q or something. And then, and then it's only in hindsight I realized, well, I would actually exert more pressure here by simply holding onto the ability. Sometimes yeah, exactly. having the ability, having access to the ability is more pressuring than simply using it. Oh, 100%. It. And the, the, those windows that you do have to throw out skill shots is when it's not going to affect the priority of the waves. Right. So let's say you're stacking a big wave, you dip into like the lane bush, you fish for a Q, doesn't hit, who cares? The wave's crashing. They can't, they can't contest this big wave anyway as well. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Similarly, if a huge wave's crashing on you, you're losing too, too hard, you, there's like a brief window between the next wave crashing and like where they are there's a bit of space you can you can fish for an ability it's not going to affect the next wave of prio because you're getting shit on anyway so right which is basically being just understanding how yeah, cooldowns work yeah. that's all it exactly. is really yeah, it's exactly. common sense when you think about it yeah yeah yeah. what do we have your third one <laughs> yeah so we've talked a lot about waves the game revolves around waves and we've gone over a lot of instances where either you or i have made a slow decision about what we're doing with the next wave, right? So think about it in advance. Decide what you want to do with the next wave. Crash, freeze, slow push. Whatever. And which wave? Like, are we crashing this wave? Are we crashing yeah, exactly. on that wave? Am I, you know, yeah. I think that's something I learned a lot from you watching you play. It's like, you're way more decisive than me. You're like, I am shoving this one and resetting here. Yeah. I, like, I think that's huge. Yeah, it's yeah. a massive one. Yeah. And yeah, having an idea of what you want to do loading into the game a lot of clients that i've had they they just kind of jump into league they just play they do whatever's in front of them but really getting your brain active in the game thinking about what you want to do 2v2 thinking about each team's win cons do they want to play through top bot who wants to scale just thinking about it will start to develop more game knowledge for you it'll get you active and we all want to avoid autopiloting I like it. Moving on. A few final I'll, points. I'll, I'll add on. one more. Uh, yeah, just sure. uh, w warding mid. It's a really easy, really simple fix. Yeah. I, I I welcome simple fixes because a lot of the stuff I talk about is more in-depth. So simple fix, just just ward mid lane. At, so that's like, uh, is that is that before or both before the mid tower breaks and after the tower mid it's, breaks? It's, it's especially valuable after either mid tower okay. has been broken because when mid tower breaks, then the, the map is more open the the laning phase is more ended and the lane is longer right so a short if you think of like a really short lane it doesn't really matter um, neither team can pressure that much but when the lane is longer the the information is more valuable there's more time for teams to like attack and defend so in general ward mid lane especially when a mid tower is down get as deep vision as you can and you'll see how it helps i like it man great stuff so a few final points here um camera panning yeah. I think that was an issue with both of us. Yep, definitely. To, it's to certain degrees. Something I'm trying to add to my gameplay. Uh, I just hotkey top, mid, and ADC so I can quickly jump to the lanes to assess the wave states better. It's important. I don't do it, and I should do it more. Yep. I think that, and I think the thing, look, I think at minimum, you should be at least directing your eyes down to the minimap to see what is happening with the waves. Mm -hmm. The next level, though, why camera venting, I think, is so important is because you can get a more accurate analysis of how volatile a specific scenario is. Like the more information you can soak up, like the better quality decision making you'll have, right? So, Definitely. Um, yeah, that's a no brainer. Um, this is a good question. So how much of a lane is determined by the support versus AD? Like, I know that's a very hard question to answer, but like, if you think like across the board, what would you say? <clears throat> um, AD is typically the determinator of like priority. So if the AD has range advantage, they're constantly autoing, they have the shove, they will generally dictate prio. But as we see, uh, like as we talked about, the support can contest the midbrush, can make it a little bit more awkward for them to move up and stuff. Mm. So it is dynamic, it's very hard to generalize. Right, okay. But I'm typically happy with a winning AD matchup because ADs have more auto attack uptime. They just constantly attack and that generally dictates prior, yeah. Okay. But I will say, if you're in a losing sub matchup, 
who cares if you play around waves you decide that you're going to give prior you go and roam then you're still effective right doesn't matter if you're in a losing matchup you just go roam and that's probably a lot harder for like middle top if you're in a, a bad matchup in a solo lane you can feel like you're fucked a lot of the times but good thing about sup is you can always do something you're you can move yeah spot on i i, I found that as well like when i play bard and solo queue it's like well yes i can have hard lanes but i always feel impactful no matter what like, I can exactly. get something done, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. But if I get counterpicked in mid, like, if you're playing, like, LeBlanc, like LeBlanc into a Vex or something, it's like, mm -hmm. good luck playing the game. Yeah. Um, t uh, So, timers. <coughs> are they, yeah. How important are they? And, and if someone is, like, in gold, platinum, diamond, what, what, what advice would you give? I would typically um, prioritize learning the fundamentals first. It's good to have, like... A rough mental timer of when people have flash but i've often experienced people getting overwhelmed by like playing around waves and fogging and then timers and warding is like oh shit so the good thing about timers is that um obviously if you know exactly when their flashes are you can punish it and that's really important but also spamming in the chat something constructive like timers helps your teammates stay focused on the game and not like dive into like random weird arguments or tilting or anything so it, it helps keep you focused how keeps your teammate focused and it can you know uh, it can be pivotal and and plays and everything but it is there, there are other things that are more important so i would first get comfortable with playing around wave states and i would first get comfortable about um moving in fog and then okay. think about that so like the fog warring, the wave stays and the wind yep. cons take precedence. Yep. This is kind of like, a, it's like a niche. It's like a, it's like a one percenter. Let's just get yeah, the 20 percenters down pat yeah. first. It's, it's like fundamentals. You want to build your foundation first. The game is about waves. So learn the waves. The game is about like pressuring and playing around the waves. So do that. And then you can start to add those little things on top. Yeah. So duoing, I, I'm a big, uh, I am anti-duo for mid lane anyway, from a perspective of like, you don't know whether or not, like who's influencing whose decisions. And you like, when you look yeah. at a play, you can't review it as well because like you're, you're, you can't take responsibility for every play. Cause you can always, you have that scapegoat. It's like, oh, they, but they called that. Oh, like they wanted to do that. So yeah. What about bot lane? Does it change anything or are you, are you similar? I think the best way to improve is to play solo and to take as much responsibility as possible for everything. So DOing is going to shift a little bit of responsibility away from you into the duo. So I, I'm not a big fan of DOing either. And even though it's a bot lane, there are two players, you're going to be the constant in every game that you play. So make sure that you know, you're the best player you can be. And soloing putting yourself in as many situations by yourself, taking as much responsibility as possible. That's going to make you the best player, in my opinion. Spot on, man. Spot on. All right. So, look, I don't think we go too deep on this, but um, mm -hmm. look, I the way I teach mid, at least yep. from platinum and above, I, I do go very deep on matchups. Um, and I remember coming into this session with you, I was a little bit confused because when we initially, when, when me and Cupcake off-camera discussed this video... You know, I was just kind of asking him about how he approaches coaching and like how he approaches like, you know, the fundamentals of support. And, you know, I said, well, you kind of can't skip the matchup understanding in Binland because it, you're, you're constantly just training and everything is tied to like the 1v1. And, and, and so, and then Cupcake said, you know, I actually don't think it's that important. I mean, yeah, there are variables that you definitely got to consider that are on a matchup basis, but... Even looking at today, it seems to me that the fundamentals of support matter way, way, way more than the match or specifics. Mm -hmm. So, I look, I don't think there's much to touch on this. I mean, is there anything you would like to add? I mean... Yeah, it might help just to think of support as a second jungle. And then you mm. ask a jungler how important is, like, the matchup or, like, the lane mechanics. It's like, what? It doesn't matter. Like, doesn't jungle, matter. Can, jungle can clear his jungle camps. He's not laning versus anyone's support is like a secondary jungler to an extent if you're not playing enchanters the whole time so it's not it's not that important you get the fundamentals down if you're in a hard losing matchup who cares you know what you're doing with each wave you're moving you're pressuring job done right you can't do that in top it's it's harder in mid as well but support um 
matchups, yeah, you, you can always find a way to pressure the map, especially if you're like Bard or Leona roaming. Or anything like with that. utility. Exactly. The support yeah. is where most of your utility is coming from. Um, so final shout outs, man. I mean, obviously this has been, this has been great. I mean, this has been super, super for me. I mean, eye opening to be honest with you. I'm excited to get into some support games, <laughs> get, nice, get yeah. those wins going. So any shout outs or like anything you would want to hunt your coaching, um, where should they find you? Things like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so I, maybe I'll chuck my, my Twitter and my discord. Normally I, I do discord yeah. for all of my coaching. Chuck that in um, description. Yeah. It's, it's. I'll be doing that for for a while still because it's off season and I love staying active and thinking about the game. So yeah, if any of you guys want to um, get some more personalized feedback, then feel free to reach out on to me. Great, awesome. Well, thanks for coming on, man. Um, this was really really helpful. I mean, hopefully for people who want to pick up support as a secondary, or I mean, there's probably people who even just play support that would learn a, lot, a bunch bunch from this anyway. So yep. um. Yeah, I mean, thanks for tuning in, guys. And I'd um, love to hear comments, thoughts, things that you, you found um, interesting in the comment section. Otherwise, I'll see you for another video. Cheers.